Troops, remember the giveaway. We are giving away two tickets to the Slam Tent. The Slam Tent is making its return. Jamie Kelly's ad living me from off screen now. So it's just a habit. Come in, mate, come in. It's, a, it's the Slam Tent. That's what it's for. Two tickets, Troops, get involved. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye, so we're giving away two tickets to the Slam Tent. Oons, oons, oons. Aye, we're giving away two tickets. So um, you can just pick any day you want to go. Um, the way you enter the giveaway is going down to the description and click the wee link that says like gleam.io you need to go through that troops or else it won't enter you so it'll take you through that link you click that link boom you're in the website what happens next oh we make it easy peasy for you right there's a link to our instagram a link to our youtube you just need to sub to us on youtube follow on instagram it's very very simple that's it and you can win two free tickets to the slam tent so get on it lad oh hello again you little idiot you now we are back. Another episode of Riley's Gaff, just like that. Just like every week. It's like clockwork, they're saying. That's what the newspapers are saying. Um, and today we have a beautiful, beautiful guest in, in the G4 Claim Studio. His name is Paul Morris. And he wrote, directed, produced, edited. edited. Did he edit it? Aye, I looked it up. Uh, did he? F***ing hell, man. So he, he wrote a movie, right? This is all off his own back. No funding in that. He done this on his own. Wrote a movie... Directed it, produced it, edited it, and as we found out on the day of going to see it, he's f***ing in it as well. So this guy can do it all, and he's here today. We hope you enjoy, Troops. Gavin and Stacey, do you remember like Smithy's mad pal who's heavy daft and Gavin and Stacey, you know? Smith. He like, works with me and that. Smithy's pal? Aye. Aye. He, he goes at once, he's like, tea, coffee? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, at work. And he's like, tea, coffee? I call it toughie. <laughs> or key. <laughs> that was brilliant. Mate, I've never seen anybody do that. No. Mad skeeter. Too much caffeine. <laughs> it is too much caffeine, mate. People, I think people don't realise how much caffeine's in tea either. Are you, are you are you a big tea drinker? I'm a coffee guy. Are you? And first thing in the morning? First thing it's the first thing I do when I wake up, mate. Is it the same? Aye. Uh, the aye. first thing I do when I, I wake up, go down the stairs and that, and the first thing I do is turn the kettle on. That's aye. the first thing. Same. And, and I'm at late every hour throughout the day until my drug addict. Clock at night. Do you feel you peak too early? I always take coffee's like my ice and hole at midday. That'll be the thing that brings me oh, back. Aye, aye, aye. No, see, I can't even get up a day what I'm doing without having one. I am not. I'm like that. No, but the thing is, right? I think I easy could do it. But at the same time, I think that it's just a habit thing. I think it's like smoking or something. Like you don't, well, I suppose smoke. It's probably the same thing, isn't it? Like a wee addiction thing. Dependency. Right. Mm, there you See, go. Bro. We've all got it, man. See, bro. We've all got, we've all got them. Can you live with them? Can you live with them? Mind just podcasting. Yeah, it, just, <laughs> it runs through the blood, man. But we're in, Troops. We're in. Young Paul Morris. Welcome, mate. Thanks Ooh. for having me, boys. Pleasant Thank to you. have you on, mate. Fantastic, man. Um... We'll obviously get into the movie, man. Come on, mm. that's the main event. I wanted to, 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 to discuss something with you before we even started, though. What about Big Will Smith, man? Big what, Wally. Mate, what's your take? Mate, I've went, I've, I've like, went back and forward with it, kind of, but I think my ultimate take is he's a mad gun, man. For doing that, Will mate. Smith. Aye, mate. Like, got, got reaction, man. I kind of felt that as well. Aye, but it's because like, he's... Chris Rock's a comedian, mate, and it wasn't even that bad, mate, you know what I mean? Ah. Mate, you slagged Alopecia in the last episode of this. I've never slagged Alopecia. <laughs> no, no like, then it's slag, we spoke about Alopecia in a light-hearted way, though. No, what I said was, right, this is my story <laughs> about Alopecia. Um, <laughs> so I said, right, my pal was forced into... No, this started, Jamie uh, texted me one day saying, can I get a bit of your hair, mate, right? No, and I said, gas. why, mate, why? But it was he was like, it's a trust exercise. No, I think he's out committing murders, to be honest, right? Um, so I was like, the only way I would do that is if maybe you go alopecia or something. And then I was talking about how a boy in my school was forced to grow a mullet because he's alopecia. Um, because it like it, it's like well the bottom of your hair like, that's where he had these patches so he just grew sort of the back of his hair right down me into the mullet and I, 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 I mate and I was saying like can I still respect that as a mullet because he was forced into it you know what I mean can that I, was a choice I, it wasn't a choice and like half the respect for a mullet 
for me comes to the choice to have the mullet. So we were t- sort of, is it half a mullet? Is it an alopecia mullet? Can we call it that? Will Will Smith come in here and leather me? Who knows? But, <laughs> but mate, aye, what do you think about it? What, what, what do you think about think Paul, Paul He's a trained fighter as well. He trained for Ali, I mean, the, and he's a big, big guy. And I just, when I see when you see it in a wide shot and you see when he, he puts his legs in it, man, and he proper connects. Aye, because some people thought, like, he punched him. But it was more like he, he swung, mate. He like he went in a stance as if he was going to punch mm. him, and then like opened the hand. I mean, do you know the what slap it was? The exact one of any he's ever seen the meme, a like Batman slapping Robin, and it's like kapow and all that, kapow or something. It's like you're away back there, man. I think he's having a time, it. But like, as soon as you think of all the stuff that's been going on, like the stuff that her, like, whatever her show is and all aye, that, and then aye. even back, do you remember? in the park he just appeared with Calvin, Calvin Harris, Harris and he was doing a world tour and he'd be himself and I think he's been like searching for himself man mm-hmm. but yeah, you think that one night you get your big victory you'd be like, able to enjoy it but it's tarnished mate there's a lot of um, conspiracies out there that Will Smith's a gay man aye aye really yeah. which you know fair does but the thing is um, I think as well just to see when I watched it it was like it was kind of like he the best thing he could have done was just laughed and just... Because nobody would have ever picked up on that. Like, no, like, do you think the news stories the next day would have been like, can you believe Will Smith didn't go up and slap him across the face there? It would have just been like, nobody would have even took note of it. Mate, Ricky Gervais called, near enough called Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio a P-word. I know, <laughs> the, I the, A couple of years before, you know what I mean? Like, people have done worse than say... By the way, we can swear that's just a word that gets us banned on YouTube, so... I have heard that. Aye, 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 mate, there's a lot of words. Aye. Like, um... <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? Aye, we tried that. So there's some work for Joe to believe for that. <laughs> Joe, keep me you on your toes, mate. Um, but I, I think you can't, you can't say a joke like that. You need to just laugh and go, aye, whatever. But I, did you know see like the shot of him and he's like laughing? Then he turns in and his wife is Jada shot and it. She's like, and he pure goes. All right, I like goes up. This is a this is I, but mate, she fucks all sorts of other guys, mate. I know. Uh, I lean this is a mad open relationship. I, I think it's like hers is her side dates open or something. There's one door, only one door. A a Linsa or something. I just see a Jaden Smith. Shagged his pal, mate. Aye. What is it, August? What a lince or something? Because like everybody's like, so Will Smith draws the line at a joke, but we'll let his son's pal shag. Mate, see that? See the way he was shouting after it? I know, mate, that's like a unhinged man. Mate, that's and that's, see what you're saying? Like, he's going through it. Like, that. that is what it looked like to me. It's like a guy who's like battling with like all these different things. Like, she's shagged, but I love her, but she, we do love each other. But, and then I think it was all that in his head, and that can cause you to react pure like impulsively yeah. and just like um, as you say like unhinged like mm-hmm. public perception as well mm-hmm. does he think he's getting viewed because as soon as he commits to that then he needs to back up and play the hard man but he's like I, the lightest he doesn't swear in any of his raps he's a pure light guy like he's pure know, Hollywood's I, best pal well Smith don't need to cut in his records but I do no he does mate no but Hingley like I thought that no I was like he's fucking like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air not mm. he's like a pure happy and always stand up and that like you say but then there was a video do you remember a video like four or five years ago that a mad guy goes up to him and goes to hug him and he goes get out of here and goes and, back and like flips him like that man I feel tougher right? this is the thing with people that are this famous man it's like it's, their brains must just be fucking scrambled eggs mate like Aye. how like the level of fame he has plus as well like you're saying like public perception and that like his his like, um, the perception of him in the public eye has always been like, he's just this big, nice, lovely guy. Like, oh, he's Will Smith, he's so down to earth and he's like clean and, uh, and I think like. All his films are all pure, like. Aye, they're all a PG the now, you know. Half, pathetic. Of happiness, no? <laughs> 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 pathetic. Things. Aye. Um, but no, I was thinking, like, who would they know I'd done that to? Like, if it was like The Rock, if The Rock was hosting it. Aye, I've been fucked. Mate, there's no Joe way Rogan. he's going to I'm trying to slap The Rock. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Aye, but he, he slapped The Rock's. Brother, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock I mean, sweet Rock brother. Yeah, no one. <laughs> aye. But so, aye, mate. So I would make that joke as well. It didn't even, it wasn't like a cracking joke. Wasn't that like funny? G.I.J. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, Wait, is that a thing, G.I.J.? No, uh, G.I.J. Like, uh, Demi Moore played her. It was just like a lassie trying to get in the army and she like shaved her head to be like, fit in with the boys and that. So right, right. Like, yeah. uh, like, like she's the man. 30 years ago. Ah, right, yeah. is that a yeah. dated joke? I know. Yeah. I kind of didn't when even... When Chris Rock was relevant. <laughs> uh, oh my God, Jimmy yeah, Kelly firing shot. I wouldn't want to be Chris Rock right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, it is, it's a mad scenario. But look, we better talk about 
angry young men and Paul Morris. Mate, we obviously, you know, we came to the Premier. We loved it, mate. Sure we absolutely loved it. The three years were there. Oh, thanks so taking much, notes and that. He actually was going to bring. Did you bring a notepad? You brought a notepad, but we were. I, I, we were too interested in our tackies. I mean, that's what I was going to say. The, 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 the plan was to like come. He was like, "I'm going to bring a notepad and all that," and I was like, "That looks heavy, edgy as fuck." Like, what the fuck? And then he ended up just munching tackies the full time, which <laughs> enjoying it. We had, we had them on your uh, on your seat in between your legs, and me and Joseph were both. I, like, like so, I was in the middle. And Jamie's my left and Joseph my right and the, the tackies are wedged between my legs and like everybody behind us and that could just see them like reaching into my dick basically. <laughs> which, you what know, are tackies? T- oh, oh my god, man. bro. Takis are these wonderful little spicy snacks, mate. They're like, see, like Cheetos, like hot Cheetos. Right. There's like takis are like, how would you describe them? It's mate, like, a, it's like a like Doritos that are folded in a snout, kind of. Or, like a eye, like a, like a, like a, a, like a cylinder. Aye, uh, aye, mate. It's like it's like imagine you got a Dorito and just folded it up, and it's just like a long sort of. They're mate. They're and a bright un- red. They're but like aye. They're American though. No. Aye, aye, aye. Are they American or like oh, they're Mexican? Maybe, Mexican. But it's like that was when I first tried them in America. I think. How much did we pay for a packet in that day? Six quid, mate. Six quid for a packet of crisps. Well, in, U- in USA sweets. Aye, no, aye, aye. 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 Just a well, there the before it, we spent yeah. about fucking eighty quid, mate. But um, I <laughs> we came, mate, and we we thoroughly enjoyed it, man. It was just the thing I loved about this was like it's just so exciting to see somebody doing something like this, mate. Like no. It's such a rare thing for somebody to do, like, especially all, all off your own back. And what I noticed in it, right, this is what I found so funny. See, right at the start, right, so, like, obviously, that see the people that are in, like, your wee gang in it, right? They're your pals, aren't they? Aye, most right, of them are, aye. Because, right, I'm sitting, right, and I'm like, I've fucking seen that cunt before. And I've seen that big guy before, and I'm like... And I, I remember these videos for Facebook years ago, mate, right? right? And it was like... All these guys, like one by one, get into a house, and it was like a. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, in the kitchen, was it? No. It was like. Or is the, was it in a bedroom? It was like they were all getting into a living room, and it was as if they were going on like not a game show, but like. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. It's like um, they had like stringer vests on. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. What, what, what was that? It was like a parody, like Geordie Shore. Aye, that was it, mate. And when I seen that, I was like, no fucking way! I know, <laughs> I know all these kids. But um, so they they've been your pals since you were. Aye, like John stays across the road. That's the, like the big guy, um, and Miller, who's like the the small guy, who plays Sydney in the film. Like they've been like my best pals since like five or he like was so uh, five minutes. Man, he's very good at it, mate. Like, he's definitely an actor, man. Aye, uh, mate, I know. Mate, everybody did uh, like the full cast were brilliant uh, acting. So like, really, 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 really good. Well, Aye. Yeah. So have you see like collectively like since you were younger, have you always been into like film and stuff like always? Not like like to the level like so I started getting proper into like films and like seeking out films when I sort of left school maybe two years after I left school but I always watched films when I was younger but it was never like oh we're going to make this do you, know, you hear about like kind of Spielberg and all that like making Aye. like kind of wee like home movies and that we just did like sketches and stuff like Aye. camera phones was obviously a big thing when mm-hmm. it came out but it was never with the incentive like this could go somewhere Aye. but then it was just like quite natural when I say like, do you want to kind of do something with like a wee camera and all that and then they were all on board so it's, it's quite rare to have a, a group of pals that would all do that because a lot of people are like, self-conscious I but know. we always done something like that and we always had that kind of same sense of humour so when it came time to get in front of a camera and like set up equipment and that they just kind of did come natural to them maybe because you're like all together and all if you I know what I mean I, like you're no like pulling in people for different groups and stuff I think know. so because uh, in the group there's maybe like three <coughs> of the, like, the kind of main core cast that weren't like kind of best pals to start with but if you mix them and also I think because I'm acting in it as well um, you're sort of trying to like I'm doing it first, so if I look like a dick first, it's like, it's all right, because I'll take the hit, do you know what I mean? And then you're kind of saying, like, I'm going to do it, I'm not making you become actors, and I'm behind the camera, and, like, I've got, I'm cool, and you're, like, making yourself look like weirdos. And you're complaining about everything they're doing and all that. Mm. Hitchcock, I I know. Know. Mate, that was, do you know, this is, like, another thing as well, like, when we got there, right? So we're, like, fucking, so brilliant. Paul's fucking got all this cast together, he's fucking wrote the thing, he's done it all but we didn't even realise you were actually in it mate no, so like we're like ah, fuck he's in it as well man this guy can do it all yeah, there was a feel good I know what, we shouldn't have really gone into details about the film and that but what was the, the bit it was kind of close to the start and it was like uh, we'll find him and something else and it was like fuck him no, so, no I mean the wee guy had the hangover say that oh, no, I'm talking aye, about we fuck were, why aye, <laughs> aye, find out what he's done where aye. he is and why he's done it fuck why aye. oh no you're right fuck why <laughs> I mean we were pissing ourselves okay, at that bit mate I think, I think as well like obviously we're not going to go scene by scene but like, the opening scene you are on that kitchen and that I could tell you like you were pals for that you know mm. what I mean was there anybody in that group that you was that you had to like outsource I like, so, didn't 
Um, the guy that plays Charlie, the kind of younger guy, mm-hmm. he was um, he's a good bit younger, and he ended up. Turns out he actually stays at the bottom of like my street. That was my mum's house mm-hmm. when I lived there, and I was putting like a who wants to be in the film? You can read the script. Even when I was trying to get casting, mm-hmm. he's like, mate, I stayed on the corner, and I'm an actor, and I was like. What do you mean? You stayed in the corner. I've never seen you before. And he's like, No, I do. And you know, when somebody's a few years younger than you, you just don't really, you're not yeah, aware of them. Aye. Do you know what I mean? So then he came on board, and John Kenny, who plays Vic in the film, who's like doing mm-hmm. the cooking and that, um, he was someone I did a short with before, but he wasn't like one of the best pals. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else outside that group was pretty much uh, actors and like people aye. wanted to be in it. Aye, but then you had that wee core group of your pals that were in that. They were aye. always a core cast, aye. Aye. So, see, just like I found it, I think it's so good because we went and seen it and it was like it's obviously filmed in like a scheme sort of thing and it was like it made it so much more real, didn't it? Like because you're like that just looks like somewhere where near where we grew up. Where Aye. is it? You sh- where is it? You end up shooting it? It's Hamilton, but it's at like the top end of Hamilton. It's um, Michael Earnock and like Edward and Fairhill and Woodhead. So it's like kind of schemes that we all kind of kicked about. Aye, and uh, were they were they like see the names that you you made up kind of scheme names? Aye, just kind of plays were, on them. Were they all? Aye, was that supposed to be? After the actual schemes that are in Hamilton, I just kind of like fiction, like slightly fictionalized versions, yeah, and then to kind of tie in with the costumes and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of because there's um, the idea was that even if you had something that was like like heavy real, because obviously it's like a surreal take, Mm -hmm. but if you had something that was like really gritty in that, and it's almost like you're not bringing anything to it, do you know what I mean? But it's like you're kind of just shooting where it is, it could be a documentary, whereas I kind of want to put our own kind of stamp on it, and that's aye. why it's a wee bit heightened with costumes and the rest of it. Aye, I, I was thinking that, like, because it is like a, because when we spoke to Chris McQueer before, he said, like, he likes all his stories to have, like, a grounding in Glasgow reality, mm. but then take them in mad places, mm. so it'll be about, like, the one, I, the, the example I used before and all, it was like a ghost cut out a canister, but the guy that's delivering it, it's like, there you go, pal, never. No, I mean, it's right. like, so you, it was the same as Angry Young Men and all, you're grounded in, like, this is a scheme, this is Scotland, these are all boys that you, we could have been hanging about with, but then it's this mad other world, uh-huh. do you know what I mean? This mad fictional kind of world that's been grounded in that. No, I agree. I think, because that was the kind of two spots, because it's like, I went to see, it was like Sweet 16's 20th anniversary, um, and I went to that. And I was partly, I was sitting there and I was like, it just connects so well with everyone. And part of me was like, ah, should, should that have been the take? Should that have been like the way you do it? Where it's almost like you, it could be like that retail stories where people were scrapping when we were younger and that. And I, I, I kind of stuck by, stick by it. And I'm like, no, because I wanted to put this other spin on it. Do you mean to give it this like serial take, like Apocalypse Now? I, I don't know yeah. if you've seen that. Like that's, um, originally it was going to be like a documentary, like shot and like just really like a small cameras and that. And then, Francis Ford Coppola came on, a guy did The Godfather, and he came on and went, no, I want to shoot it in, like, Vista Vision and have this massive, like, weird, surreal take. And that was sort of, like, the, the idea. You blend the real stuff that would connect and you kind of get the emotional line of it. Right. But um, it's also a wee bit bizarre, so it'd be memorable in a way. Aye, it was like, that's what I found with, with Angry Young Men, because it was, like, it is based... It is based off, like, basically, like, rival fucking young teams, mm-hmm. basically, in it, essentially. But the way that you've... Vi- like made it visually where like all oh, they've all got their wee fucking uniforms and that it was so like I think you hit the nail on the head with it because we pure enjoyed that side of it because obviously we didn't we, we didn't know what we were coming in to watch mm-hmm. and then it was slowly piecing together and I was like oh this is just based off it is essentially Scottish young teams mm-hmm. like fighting each other and going into each other's schemes and trying to do things but there's this whole visual side to it where they've all got their matching uniforms and that and I just I, I thought you'd done that I thought you'd done that really well innit? there was a mad that. spot as well at the end where they were all walking by I mean I pure loved that I was pure going on about it like the colours were flashing up yeah. when they were all walking by near the end and I think that was like kind of tying together the signifier of like these yeah. different kind of gangs and their ties to the colours throughout the film kind of thing because one of the things you're thinking about early on was I don't know how you used to feel about it when you try and like <clears throat> start and try and be like sincere I don't know if you feel like it's when you're making your stuff and it's almost like it always feels silly and I don't know if it's just a self-conscious thing or whenever you're kind of setting out, maybe you just felt like that and maybe the first time you sit down to do the podcast or something, it's almost like, what are we doing here? Do you mean, this I feels like a wee bit like, are we like playing a role here? Aye. And it always feels like that, but when I started to think about it, like, are the, are the costumes silly and all that? And then it ties in, but all all costumes are silly. Like, Aye. the Bloods and the Crips is it's a stupid thing. Like, Aye. you were all red, we were all blue. Aye. Like, Uniforms, police uniforms. Aye. It's oh, what is it? It's just a signifier to say this is us and that's you. Uh, well, but that's, that's the thing as well. Like a uniform in it. I guess. Did you know say that? Like you were like that's just like they're wearing their uniforms the same as like Aye, when you were a wee guy, you'd be wearing a tracky. Yeah. And like Aye. your merit peak, it's like putting the flag up and saying here's who I am. It's all an identity thing. So Aye. I just kind of tried to put a wee 
like metaphorical take on it by having like the mass and all the rest of it. Aye, no, really, I, that's something that pure stuck out to me about it, and like just exactly like, nailing the head what you're talking about, like keeping that realism, like being in the scheme and like the things they're saying to each other, and, but the the visual aspect it just took it like um, a show I like. Um, you seen Sex Education? No, you seen it? No. I've, I've seen the pilot. Right, out. so like seeing Sex Education, are you see, you seen it? Right, so it's like they're in this sort of like. They're in a school, right, which is in, like, the, it's in the UK, but it's, like, they're all wearing, like, quite preppy clothes, like, as if they're in America, mm-hmm. but they all have they all have iPhones and that, but they all drive, like, 80s cars, so, like, nothing adds up, but it's so, like, and what that does, I feel like, is that, so, because, like, say, like, a show, like, say, River City, right, mm-hmm. that's meant to be as real as it can be, right, so, like, you're watching that, you're going, but in my head, I'm watching it going, well, that wouldn't happen, like that, or that, but when you create that, sort of realism with the sort of wackiness it puts it in its own universe so you can you can be in that for that hour and a half or whatever it is you're because you're like oh well i wouldn't say that wouldn't happen because this is in a total different universe you're invested in that reality instead of oh no that shouldn't i because like sometimes you like when you see films that are like that like pure there's no go like a time you kind of like pin them down to a time the same way you've you've said there and all but um do you know how like it's a, it's modern looking because of the environment, right? Oh. So like the hussies and the the motors and stuff, but then a lot of your ideals that were going it was like the community was kind of ran by these gangs a wee oh. bit, like they were like, oh, we'll take the bins, we'll sort that for you hen and oh. that. And then there was bits that were like, you need to get the milk on time to these farmers that were just like normal boys. So that's a kind of like heavy old school oh. thing. So would, would you, if you had the budget and stuff, would you have changed the full scenery or would you have wanted it to be like that? This world... Is modern, but it's still got these kind of values. Do you know what I mean? The only thing I, I would have changed with any budget, and it's something, something that we tried to avoid. I couldn't do anything about like parked cars or stuff. I would have took all the cars off the road mm-hmm. and made it like the only car was like the main gang like, coming into town, that modernity, like someone coming in and they've got like because first of all you start thinking like they need to get like some the young team need to bring the message up when they're in hiding. So it's like why not just use your mobile? Aye. So you try and take things like that away. So the only phone uses a landline. Um, they don't. You don't see them like cutting about with computers and all that. They're making their fry ups. It's all kind of traditional. So that right. was the idea. Like just keep try and ground it and almost like you're saying timeless. But the idea was that it was this area, like in a western, whereas a reverse right. western, a western's like somewhere. This town is just getting built and it's just starting. Um, but whereas like I felt like Hamilton and the certain areas were like places that had been and gone. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like there's a wasteland now. Aye. Do you know what I mean? It's just like this is all that's left, and that was the kind of idea we we're trying to go for. Ah, yeah, did it came across that way definitely because like there's a bit that Charlie, who was the the boy that had the girlfriend uh-huh. and stuff in it, he says like I'll contact you. Doesn't he say I'll get a text? Aye. Not I mean, he's like, I'll contact aye. you later aye, on. Not I mean, pure, that pure stuck in my head as well. That he's like reading a letter at one point. That was the kind of idea. There's a lot of kind of ideas we cut out just to keep the momentum up and keep the pacing up. But there was all that wee bits and bobs like. I don't know if it comes through, but in the montage bit, it's like the young team are bringing a bag up, and that's like a bit of scram, like a flask, and like letters for like letters for home to him and all that. Ah, so I that see, was, I didn't that, catch that, but I know I, I, get, I got that idea though that they were going away for kind of civil, no civilized. Aye, I know what you mean. Like, kind of, they were getting away for it for a bit. Do you know what I mean? I mean do you know what it kind of reminded me of? a wee bit, like a kinda for for older people a wee bit. But like a Glaswegian stand by me a wee bit, you mm. know what I mean? And I'm in a weird way, like it. just right. even the way it looked because of the colours and stuff mm-hmm. and all, do you know what I mean? And obviously that's set in what's that sixties or seventies or something, do you know what I mean? And it is a bit of a coming of age that like he's at the end of it, he's like he's away with his bird mm-hmm. and all that, and then like, people are like, what are we gotta do then? Do you know what Aye. I mean? Like how are we gonna carry on? It's like oh it's the pure end of everything, but it's no Aye. but in that point, if it, that was you and your life, you would be like It that's feels it. like a pure new chapter Aye. and Aye. Aye. which everybody goes through. Aye, things. no exactly. And so you just to take it back you were saying like you kinda you done sketches and that when was that kinda when you were in school and that, like high school and stuff, or like just after high school? Sort of like through a bit really young, but then doing stuff where I would get boys together and I'd start like writing, you know, I mean? you know, just like messing about and see what happens. Mm. That was like a couple of years after high school, so maybe when I was like 20, I Aye. started doing stuff like that. Aye, so see, so just, I mean, obviously for that, to having a film in the Glasgow Film Festival, right, that's a huge, huge leap. So like, what kind of stuff inspired you to like want to have, like write your own movie and see instead of just, because like for me, I do wee sketching, right, but never once in my, my mind have I ever wanted to write a movie. It's just no something that would be in my brain. So when did you start thinking about, like I want actually want to write a full movie here? I was doing like 
self-filming ones like Instagram but it was like 15 second videos and like Vine and stuff like that mm-hmm. this was like, a good few years ago and then I was doing like writing so I thought like writing comedy scripts I thought I'll give it a try and I like wrote like an episode for a pilot I made up and then I went and did like a college course uh, thinking like maybe right, maybe I could break into writing still trying to kind of figure out what it was I wanted to like specialise in if you want but then I was like well I'm writing this stuff and in college they sort of said ah, you need to be willing to have like five or six scripts on the shelf and then um, you need to keep doing that and I thought I, I couldn't do that like I'm not going to have all these scripts mm-hmm. piled up I need to be willing to go, I want to go and make it if I've wrote it Aye. so I was like right am I, am I an actor then am I because I want to be in them so I'm an actor so I, I tried that as well and and then I got like not bad I tried to go for like, the biggest one in like nearby was like the conservatoire and I like practiced really hard to go and audition for it but all the, the full time I was like this isn't right and when I got knocked back I didn't think oh that's me the end of the road I, my first thing was like right get a camera now and I got a wee DSLR and then I started getting like the boys back in and doing like wee sketches and then doing like short films at that point and then I was thinking I really enjoy this part of it like putting music to it like putting titles on it like editing and all the rest of it I enjoy every part of it so I thought right try and build up an ambition each time they got a wee bit longer they're like many, many features after a while and then I was like right well try and write a, a feature then because like short film, I kind of spoke about that before, but like short films used to be the way it was like, that'd be your calling card. So see if you made a short, that would be, then somebody maybe pick you up and say, oh, that's cracking, have you got anything else? But see, because a lot of people can make them because of like digital technology and the kind of smaller cameras, uh, it's not, it doesn't stand out as much. So I thought, try and do something that's like quite big as like an introduction, something ambitious. And I thought, right, I'll try and write a feature because I thought I could do that. And I knew I had cast there. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of hoped for the best that more people would come on board. And then that's what it became the film. Aye. So that was like the first... F- First full feature you've ever wrote for the young men. That's un- that's unbelievable, that's isn't it? Unreal, that's that unbelievable. Thank you. So wait, so like when? How long ago did you did, did you start like sort of planting the seeds or like? Because I'm interested in like see the, the the whole the whole story of that. Yeah. Like where what was the first kind of ideas you had in your head? Did you always want it to be a bit of sort of sort of young team vibe or like where where did you first start? Where was the first sort of ideas in your head? The first thing was sort of thinking about what we had and like looking about, it's, it's interesting hearing that so many like people relate to the, the area and the layout, but obviously a lot of them are the same, but to me it kind of felt like Hamilton was up on this hill, it's almost like mythical, you're looking out to this great horizon, you mean like what could be and all the rest of it, but then also the kind of twists and turns, you've got this built up forest that back in the day, like if the boys were going drinking or something, it's called the Five Hills, see that area they go hiding in and where the film ah, yeah, opens, yeah. it's called like the Five Hills, but like the police couldn't get there and if they were to come up, they had no chance because everybody knew every way and out. You know, it's like your own wee so area. You, you put that in the film as Aye. well, didn't you? Because so there was like nobody knows that nobody knows that way better name or something. Uh-huh. Says, it, didn't they? And that's that's the idea. It's like you know the way, if you knew the way out, um, what what could happen? And then I sort of was wondering about my camera, and I was just doing like wee tests and stuff, and I was thinking well, it could be maybe this. And it, I did a short of Angry Young Men in 2016, and it was sort of more like a more like a vigilante sort of style. It was almost like they've taken it upon themselves to clean up the area. So that was the sort of initial idea, but then I started thinking about, right, if you're going to make a feature, if you're going to put all this time into it, what do you love about films? Like, what would you say is, like, that's, like, your that's your identity in a film? I was like, well, I love, like, like exciting parts, like, big action bits, but I also love, like, dialogue, boys just sitting on the table, like, in Only Fools and Horses and all that, I love, even though it's not a film, but that kind of pattern, just sitting around and bonding, but then also I like the sort of, um, like tonal shifts and like you can have like dark moments but then humorous moments and blending yeah. that and then it just kind of grew from there and then it's sort of like putting your own personal life in it a wee bit but then trying to think right well maybe this guy's trying to get away and like red blue and yellow is sort of like colors he used in children's toys and i thought that's maybe quite a good way for like childhood and that's almost like he's getting chased by his childhood as he's running away and i was thinking that's maybe quite good and try to pair that with something else and then it just sort of grew from there and then i spent like two years writing it 2016 to 2018 and it just sort of grew, and and I had like it's hard to get that, but that what's the main story? Like, what do they want? Like, Aye. what is that? Um, and once you had that, then you, all the weird bits, the details kind of fell into place. Aye. What did they just when you were saying there about colour? What was the see the camo colour? Mm. Was that just meant to be like they were like militant? They were like the pure top dogs, or was there a reason behind that? It was sun. I think, I think back in the day, it was almost like inspired they're like kind of be a young cat they're always like a young catholic group of boys i mean there's like we kind of to show where they were nothing to be like prejudiced to that but it was almost like inspired maybe by a certain like republican group in some way <laughs> but then you kind of mix that because then the masks become something else because obviously they wear masks and it's trying to split that apart so not having it like it's an homage to the ira <laughs> but it's like almost having it like 
the masks then become uh, like when you get to a certain age, everyone just turns into the same. Do you know I mean like all the wee things that separate right, these wee guys? Right, then they're right. all just the same. They're all homogenized. Because at the end, like there was ones that that had their own wee thing on, joined this conglomerate kind of uh-huh. group, and then they had the mask on, and then you were like, "Who is that?" And it, that actual came across because you're thinking, "Who is that now?" Even Aye. though. Do you know what I mean? He's covered up his face, but then in a deeper sense, he's joined this gang that's like lost Aye. his identity. No, kind of thing. That was Aye. the idea. Um, another thing, I don't know. I thought we don't need to include this, right? Because it's a pure tangent. But see, when you said like only fools and horses sit around the table, my brain goes a hundred mile an hour, right? And I just <laughs> remembered one thing that happened in that once, right? It was like uh, Rodney's sitting playing hang with the granddad. Dell, he's sitting playing Monopoly, right? And, he, and then the grandpa, like, stops on one of his hotels and he goes, right, you, you got to give me 500 quid. And he goes, I ain't paid 500 quid to stay in a hotel next to a waterworks. He'll be stinking, <laughs> right? And then he goes, and then Rodney goes, no, Dell, tell him, come on. And he goes, got to be honest with you, Rodney, I don't know why you built a hotel there. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a lot of money, I know. It's so good, mate. Gee, I guess... That may be like one of the best written like shows ever, Jake's man. So I, I think it definitely like, is. Dialogue wise, not like the I, even like the emotion there. Do you mean like they deal nah. with like miscarriages? They deal with death. They deal with like him want to get away. Like class as well. Aye. Like Rodney's this like kind of social climber. He believes he's this academic and deals like this working, <laughs> but he still loves him and all that. I just think it's like I, I, some of the, the bits in it. One of my favorite bits in it is um, see when uh, Rodney and Cassandra split up, Aye. and then. Um, Dell finds out he's going to the cinema with Alassie and Uncle Albert's sitting there and he's like, um, right, Rodney's gone out with a girl but, um, and he's, he should be still seeing Cassandra. So I'm going to wind him up and I need you to chime in and say, like, that's not what the trotters do and all that, but wait for my cue. So right away there's a suspense because you know that Uncle Something's Albert's coming. sitting there ready to go <laughs> and uh, Rodney comes in the room and um, Del goes like, ah, where, are you, where are you going? And he's like, eh, I'm just off out. And he goes, off out and Uncle Hubble goes, <gasps> goes not yet not yet and it, it keeps going man it keeps going it's, oh, it's, it's, it's so good and it eventually comes in pure late and it's just like it's genius man it's genius it's genius and it's what you're saying about like see see just the, the bits you were kind of referring to the only fools and horses just the mad just sitting about and just mm. The, the sort of beauty that comes are just doing a kind of nothing at, yeah. the, at the same time. That, you know that I mean? bit in the angry young man when he's like, don't burn the sauce juice. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere. Aye. And then the first bite, it's burnt. Aye. <laughs> and then it goes to the next scene. That was kind of like that, and it? Like just... Aye, no, definitely. Definitely. Um, and then, so... So you've you've wrote this movie, right? And then, so how do you... Because you've done this all off your own back, didn't you? There wasn't any funding you get given? Or, no. So how much, how much in total did the whole thing... Cost, cost you, do you think? Like equipment and um, like props and stuff, probably like five grand all mm-hmm. in. And even though that is like, that's a lot of money, do you mean no, uh, not many people got five grand sitting about, but I would do, I'd build my equipment up over the years, do you mean? So I'd buy a camera, I'd buy like a drone, I'd buy like uh, a crane and all the stuff we've used. Um, so really it's probably like 500, 500 quid to a grand on props and costumes. Aye. Um, but the thing is, like, even like no budget films are still like so much more. Do you mean because as soon as you pay cast, as soon as you pay crew, you get lights in and even the type of camera. So it is very low budget, and I think that that will split people because they're maybe used to seeing certain things. But um, hopefully, people tune into the story early on, and if you get it, you get it. It's your sense of humour. But then you just kind of need, like we're speaking of early, you kind of need to shake it off because you're going to divide people. You're going to be somebody's cup of tea and somebody's not. So is that? Um, you said like sometimes no budget films are merit, so your film was below no budget. I well, <laughs> I will some I'm trying to think like comparisons. So it's different because when film was in the picture and you're paying for film, everything you shoot is like you're burning money. Do you know what I mean? And then you need to get developed, and then you need to pay an editor, or you need to edit yourself. So I mean, I I can even I, you're talking like a couple hundred grand is like still a very very low budget and even like a million in America is like no budget as well. So it's mad, isn't it? It's hard, but you can't relate to it because even when you're looking for examples, like you're saying, right, who's done this? And you look at like best low budget features, and it's like fifty grand, and you're like, oh, that's no. I mean by no budget, man. I mean like no money, I mean, like that's camera, a and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean the taxi there. <laughs> no, that's exactly. And like, no budget's free to me. Do you mean what's the closest we can get to free? So really, that was it was a sort of an experiment. But there's people who's done it. The guy who made Lord of the Rings, made a film called Bad Taste, and he's like a genius man. He did like he made all the costumes, he built the rigs, he built out a timber. And this is pre-internet, so he was just doing it like when he was just and by intuition. That's madness. Well, That's honestly, he's, he's a total genius and like just could put his hand to anything. So there's in Christopher Nolan, the, the guy that did Batman and, and Tenet and all that. He's um, he made like a no-budget feature. He would shoot on weekends. He did it with film. 
Um, it would use like natural light. You'd have them all standing by windows and stuff like that. So there were examples that it could be done. Um, but, but that's like, see, I always think this, right? I always, like I think that's about mer- not even just things like that. See, if you've heard about something, that means it's hardly ever happens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for example, somebody was saying like, oh, if you let your dog in a field, it will uh, get shot by a farmer. And I was like, no, it won't, because I've read it in the paper once. So like so if you if you hear about it I, once in about I, ten years, it doesn't happen rate, a lot. Do you know what I mean? Sort of Even thing. though that's a thing, like because somebody else might read that and go, well, that happens. Mm-hmm. But like that means that doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? So see when you're looking at that Christopher Nolan thing, you're like, if you're reading about that, it means it's hard to heavy, do. Heavy hard to do. Nah, do you know what I mean? Can, it can be done. But then you're also see if there's another option. Like say for example, there was like in Japan, um, guy Kur- Kurosawa, this big um, Japanese director, like a legend. He started out and he was like an assistant director and he'd work under somebody, he'd get mentored. If that was an option, if I applied for funding and somebody's like, ah, oh, you like films, right, come on the set and we'll do that, I would have took it, do you know what I mean? But you're kind of looking at, right, I want to be a filmmaker, how do I break through? So it's almost like desperation where you're like, I know it's unlikely, it could be a total mess, but let's take our chances because I'm going to be standing about anyway, do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. the average age for a director's first feature in the UK is probably close to 40, like in terms of you make shorts, get funded shorts, you build your name up and all the rest of it. Um, because it's a really hard route and there's very limited funding, so you're, you're fighting for resources. So you had to do something sort of like um, unconventional. Do you uh, know what I mean? Mate, it's just mad. it's mad you done this just with such such a low budget and everything. And I was wondering as well, like, so how it took you two years to write it. Mm-hmm. So how how long did it take after after you wrote it? How long did it take you to film it? Uh, three years in a day. Three years, jeez, man. So were you working? Were you working at the same time as doing this? I am still time? working. I am still, still doing it all. I right, will, I full suppose, time. I. That's that's crazy, mate. And were all the boys as well, or the actors? Aye, and so they were like having kids during it. They were like there was kids that were conceived and born. I was I was on engaged. set. <laughs> <Aye. laughs> <laughs> 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 You're having a baby here, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a fight. This is an important scene. <laughs> but it'll be an easy stop because like that, that that's not far away from how I was feeling. Do you know what I mean like it's almost like this is my my baby, and I have, and it's and I had to keep checking myself and being like. These boys are like grafting it, all of them are like tradesmen are like obviously working full stop. Do you know what I mean going out at the weekends, there's football on, it's like their own time at the weekend, you're taking that away. And I did feel like you're gonna be taking heavy liberties here. So I was always conscious of that. Like I kind of say, right, give me four dates, give me four weekends back to back. So it was like I'll do a month with them, I'll do a month there, and just you had to really it was like a big like diplomatic mission. Do you know what I mean you had to keep everybody on side and know where them out? Mate, how like, amazing did that premiere feel? Like mm. Was it like, because I imagine that, mate, imagine that length of time and then that's it, you've got it out and you're like, you're watching it. I actually can't, I can't believe that. I, I couldn't even imagine how that would be. I know, mate. after that length of time. I've never worked on it and I smidge that as like hard we, as that, I, This mate. is how I find it amazing, right? Because I know how, I suppose we're doing it like weekly, right? But I know how hard this is today when we're working, right? Mm. But this is only on for... Like, we just film and just talk shite, there's no, ah, and then this scene and you come in and there's a, an actor we need to source and all that. Like, mm-hmm. we've had a few actors kidding on to be people in that on here, kidding on to be guests in that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's just, it, I just find it, ma- the length of time, so oh, for, for the first idea you had about this till it was finished was five years. I, I mean, I was like having the sort of, thinking what it could be, but like sitting down and saying, right, I'm making this now, committing to it, it was probably aye. five years in a day, aye. and then I was, I was editing it, so probably longer, do you mean, I edited all through lockdown and that as well. So, so did you edit, like, how does that work? Do you get, like, everything, and then you sit down and edit it all, or do you do it, right, that's uh, kind of the, f- the first part done, do you know what I mean, do you edit as you go? I, what I do is, like, after I'd say a day's shooting, and I had a scene, I'd cut it together and say, does that work? Like, did the ideas work? Did the camera moves, like, all cut together? But then I went like saying right there's like the first opener, do you know what I mean? Because it wasn't shot chronologically. It was like the first scene we shot was the kitchen scene, like the breakfast scene, and the last scene was like another kitchen scene when um, the guy comes in like um, with the mask on and is like trying to get them to make the deal and all that. So you couldn't really do that, but also you don't really know what you've got until you can sit with it down. Do you know I mean so you kind of put three scenes together and be like, oh, that's what it is because it gets its own momentum when you have the full part. So at the end of it, it was just doing that and then doing the sound design yeah. and everything else. So you kind of, as you go, you clean up things, but then at the end, you kind of stitch everything together properly. Aye. Aye. You don't, like, I don't have like, scenes waiting. By When I do sit down and edit it, it's like, right, let's bring in all the raw files and then sit down. So it's, it's a mission, but like lockdown was a blessing for that. Aye. I suppose it would, it would be, have been nice. It was a... Oh, so w- lockdown, you were editing it, or were you filming at the same time? For, so, 2020, first lockdown, so we shot, like, the 
the scene of them going into hiding the outdoor scene in March 2020 then it was like four months like doing nothing and that was like really frustrating because I was about halfway through so I just watched like loads of films tried to streamline what we had left and then shot again but then 2021 and our lockdown at Christmas and then what I did is I my car was up in the higher purchase so I sold that and like, I bought stuff to build an editing PC so I, like, I built that and then edited from like January to like, that lockdown end March but then I still had other scenes to shoot so I got like, the last 30% of that and then from June last year then just edited and then did, we did the score and uh, it was pretty much going right up until the festival so that was it I was wanting to ask you did the score or not I said that to you the day didn't I was it you? Was it I, I, I was wrote it and I? then my mate Pat um his DJ name subside. He was um, kind of took it on him as like he produced it. Do you know what I mean like so he fixed everything Mastered and then I uh, like, did it. I like, and even like chose instrumentation. Like That's made class. it sound like a score. So I did, mate. It sounded really good. Oh, so cheers. Did. Appreciate it. No, no fucking wonder you felt like this was your baby, mate. <laughs> 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 mate, blood, sweat, tears, and motors. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a it's a great way to learn it. Do you know what I mean like oh. you need been forced into it because say the best case scenario, say you did have a script, right, and then some studio came along, like Fox or Universal, you just wrote a script and they were like, um, right, we'll fund this for you, You're, you've written a film, you're in their debt in a lot of ways because you've got no leverage apart for you wrote the film, so if you come on board that you're just really, really grateful and you're almost like not want to step out of your lane. Happy to be here. Oh. Exactly, <laughs> and, and that can be great to be humble but at the same time you're also then going to miss out on a lot of learning and maybe you'll be scared to make choices but it's like oh I don't I don't get involved in the, the uh, shooting because that's his job book. do you uh, know what I mean but then when you've done it and a lot of directors have done that even if it's not like the same budget we had they've got an opinion on everything so they can go to like head of costume they can go to like the cinematographer and go like why am I not doing it this way and the cinematographer might be like some old school boy it's like oh because it's not done that way and he can say well I know it can be done that do you know what I mean so you can then you've got a bit of authority aye so you I by doing everything you've sort of done you, you've actually done like all aspects of it haven't you like, you've got a crash course in it, you're not a master at them all but you mean you can kind of say I've got an opinion here's how it should be and then somebody aye. better than you can work with you do you know what I mean rather than you being in their debt and saying okay if you say so do you know what I mean you've been doing it for 20 years exactly. like, I don't know anything you know it all aye. exactly it's like when you were saying about how if you you make a shot that shot do you say dog tags or something? You use that phrase. Uh, your calling card. Your calling cards. Uh, <laughs> dog tags. I don't even know <laughs> where that off. Uh, is. That like no, that what? is mate. It's because Call of Duty's got calling cards <laughs> and dog tags. <laughs> <laughs> so like your feature length film that's been in cinemas now is your calling card. Not exactly. I mean like in future uh-huh. to go forward with because you've just done everything. You've and sorted you can, it out for yourself. Which can, but then it, there's everyone's got a price. Do you know I mean so you can you see you've done all that, but then. If you had wrote a cracking script and then you had the, these really polished ga- guys coming in, then the script might stand out on its own. But because I'm doing a bit of everything, maybe it's not as clear like where they can put you after that. Do you know what I mean? But um, you hope I, you just fight your case. I think in your like in your case, I think people will know that the, like the story. Do you know what I mean? People will know like this. This is what happened. I think it's been quite widely covered, hasn't it? Like, I know it has been. in the Times and all that, and like oh, all these different papers and stuff, people know. Mad. Hey there you with a sad face. Do you want to make a G4 claim? Well, you need one of these cups first. Only joking. <laughs> um, but I, if you want to, you know, claim something in this whole world of ours, you know, people are claiming, people are claiming that they're flat. And um, thankfully G4 claims don't really deal with any of their claims. It's merely day away. Oh, did somebody bump into the back of you? Do you need to sort that out? Get in touch with G4 Claims. All their stuff is in the description. Go chase after it, you know. Don't just, oh, somebody bumped into you at the supermarket. Are you a chicken head? Are you going to just, oh, oh, sorry, I'll fix it myself. No, claim your money. Get in touch with them. And also, you know, if you want to start the podcast, get in touch with Greg. There's the stuff's in the description. Get in touch with him. You could come up here, sit in the hot seat, use these lovely arms and maybe even sniff the chairs that we've been on. And that is very weird, but if you want to do that, you can do that. Get in touch with Greg. Cheers. Troops, Miles and Co. Boom, boom. You know, they've been sponsoring the show for a good while now, and we all know where they are. They're in the heart of the West End, baby, yeah? Besides Subway and across the Hillhead Subway, so it's a good way to remember it. If you've seen a lot of Subway signs, you know you're near Miles and Co. and Byers Road. Um, pop in, get a wee haircut, and tell them Riley's gaff sent you, because you know what's going to happen. You're going to get money off your haircut. It's very, very beautiful, very sexual, and um, very, you know, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. So if you're needing a haircut, pop into Miles & Co. Tell them Riley's Gaff sent you, and you're going to get money off your haircut. They are the best about. The lads down there, they will sort you out. But also, troops, we're still in the hunt. We're still looking for two fine young human beings 
to come and get their hair cut off me and Jamie Kelly. Now, you will appear on a sort of episode of Riley's Gaff. So think about that. So fire us a DM if you're interested. What's going to happen, basically, Troops, is um, we're both going to have a barber each as a, like a mentor sort of thing during the haircut. And whoever gives the best haircut at the end will win money. Well, we won't win the money. You, whoever gets the haircut is going to win some money. Um, and win just a lovely experience meeting the boys from Riley's Gaff and Miles and Co. What more could you want? Um, so if you're interested in that, Contact us through our DMs on Instagram. A few people have said already, so I don't know how we're going to pick, you know, who maybe will make us all fight each other for it. That could happen. So, I troops, if you're interested in that, DM us on Instagram. And as always, go and give Miles, a, Miles and Co. a wee visit and get your hair cut. Cheers. Troops. Ba 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 ba! Have we got a claxon sound there? No. Nah. All right. Ba 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 ba! There's a claxon for you. Homemade claxon. Um, new sponsor alert, Babao, Belter Lux, oh my goodness gracious me, now we've got a new sponsor on board guys, and it's a Belter, as you can see for the name, it is a Belter, um, basically, our new sponsor, Belter Lux, run skill-based competitions for you to win astronomical prizes, now, the, 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 the competition that's running right now, do you know what the prize is, do you know what the prize is? Yeah. It's a yacht, yep. Yeah. They're giving away a big yacht. No, they're not. They're actually... They're giving away a submarine. <laughs> but not not a real submarine. It's a Rolex Submariner bluesy. And that's a fantastic watch. You know, when the Rolex comes out to play, you know, the kids go away, as they always say. And that's kids are pretty annoying, so you, you will want that. So each of the draws are carried out using a... Th- regulated third party website and are drawn live on Instagram so you know there's no tomfoolery afoot and that is the main thing when you're entering these competitions so it's not just a case of like a raffle and you're like oh it's just a luck like it's it's there's competitions you need to earn these prizes but there's been several winners we'll put pictures up there they've won fucking Rolexes and you could win a Rolex think about that so see you enter the tickets for the current competition are on sale now for £40 each that's it. So you could have a Rolex for 40 quid. And I know a guy that said does sell Rolexes for 40 quid, but they're not like these Rolexes. Um, there's only 650 tickets available, so you need to go to the website, www.belterlux.com. So I'll spell that out for the audio listeners out there, yeah? www.beltrlux.com. And... As always, guys, even though it's a new sponsor, even though we're always bringing you fantastic things on this podcast, you're going to get money off this as well. So you're going to get your first order, you're going to get 25% off, think about that, code Riley's Gaff 25 and I'll spell that out for you as well, for all the dyslexics out there, we love you, baby. Um, R-E-I-L-L-Y-S-G-A-F-F-2-5. And it's the number 25. Don't be typing 25 like an idiot. TWO on that. Don't do that shit. So, there you go, troops. And also, you'll find them on uh, at Belter Lux. Same spelling on Instagram, on Facebook. There's so many giveaways, competitions. Go check them out, guys. And remember, because of us, you're getting money off. Be grateful for these things. Cheers. See, even just going back to like shooting it and. Obviously, you're shooting in a lot of... I'm guessing the kitchen scenes were somebody... That's you're, my mum too, ah, Exactly, sorry. right? So, but I'm thinking about scenes where, like, there's big, massive fights going on outdoors, outside people's houses. Mm-hmm. Was there any, like, what the fuck's going on in my street? There's guys with masks on <laughs> running about. Like, <laughs> did you run into any problems shooting? Because, obviously, when you've got a big budget, you can just shut off fucking exactly. streets and do anything yeah. you want. The but you don't have that. No, a lot of it comes down to how early you can get up, and that's another thing where you need to kind of balance morale because you're, like, right, the lake it's on at like six during the summer can you be here for that do you mean like that's a big ass do you know what I mean for anyone like, I, I don't get up for that time <laughs> if I've got a choice uh, but there was if you can get up early enough then you can get the locations and you can kind of miss a lot of that but there, I mean I shot like the chase scene like through Fair Hill I'd shot stuff there before like old short films and it was like ones about these priests right and then um, it was in, no no this today they played <laughs> in there <laughs> it's the Predates that, but mm-hmm. uh, back back in the day, say 2015, it might, 2014, I think it was, and we're out filming in the, the, the grass and just hear like, these flutes starting playing and the drums going. I was like, oh, fuck, it's the on's walk today. And you're like, 
and these boys clocked us and they were like steaming and like started stoting over and luckily everyone was all right but I thought it was the first shoot after lockdown it's this big chase scene through Fair Hill and I thought see if somebody wants to turn up the day and go ah this is my street I'm not moving like, like fuck your shot like I, what would I say I can't even move them yeah. do you mean that they've got every right to be there so I was like really terrified about that but on the whole it was all right a couple like old boys came out like one boy came out with like this like massive poppy on when we had like one of the mass scenes and was like pure shaking with anger saying what's all this then and <laughs> and we're just like standing back it's like it's all right and all that and like we gave him like one of the flyers and he was like eventually we managed to like subdue him and he just kind of turned away and walked back but you kind of you're apprehensive about that but luckily we're, we're not too bad yeah i think um i've just like still try to process the user dressed as priest in the orange wardrobe i, <laughs> Mate, I love the, 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 the image of this guy walking out with a poppy that's like this size <laughs> it's like it's oh. shaking honestly man shake with anger Mate, like the mad uh, the, the poppy in english football that came out and it was like a person's costume and it was like it was just a do you, do you remember that? I no, don't, I don't know. It was like it was not like, like mascot costumes oh, yeah. or like big like big hoopy and all that. It was just a big pop and it walked out <laughs> that of that. The kids were holding its horn, walking out, mate. I'm at my wall game or something. Poppy. Last year, I. God damn. <laughs> it was that guy. They're going to attract that man, but they did come up and then eventually managed to calm them down. But I mean, if you're like hot tempered or that, it could go either way. But you kind of need to realise that where you are and like you don't own the area. But then again, the same token, neither do they. So they've got no right to move you. But they can make it awkward if you're trying to do certain shots and they make Aye. noise or in the background. So luckily, it was all right. Aye, we've like on a smaller scale, we've kind of been had that thing happen like, with Connor Riley and that. And you have that for the fl- fly event or was it the high rise? Oh, like just oh, people. Aye, we done the we done like a we done like a sketch and it was like uh, the high rise videos oh. and it um, we had like we were filming and like uh, turn he died so it was like because we were we were amongst us in a group chat going what's the least jailbait high rise flats because obviously like they can be quite quite dodgy sometimes I was pushing for the ones in Springburn but nobody was up for it (laughs) mate there was actual heat we were meant to be got to that one right and um, I remember it was the day before we were gone and I said to I was sitting with Erin and she was like where is it you're filming anyway right and Erin's from like over that way right and I said aye what is it Balgrey Hill oh yeah that's the one Springburn aye Balgrey Hill flats and she she actually just done that to me (laughs) and I was like "Ah, aye she's like I have any date done now (laughs) I was like how and she's like People will definitely say stuff to you yeah. if you're doing that. Do you know what's interesting? You say that. I don't know if you've heard the guy James Price. He's a filmmaker from Springburn. No. Um, so he's like like l- legit great filmmaker. And he just done a short for the BBC called The the Taking of Balgrey, Balgrey House. Is that what you call it? Balgrey Hill. Balgrey Hill, The it's, Taking of That. Aye. And um, Sean Ewart actually replied. I put like a still up and I don't know Springburn that well. But um, it was like a still and they used like exterior footage, but it's from Canvas Slang. And I wonder if that was the reason that they just thought we can't really shoot there. It's maybe not safe to shoot. But right. I, I don't know, like Pricey would be better to say about that's it, but he's the from hang, there, which is a The thing is, right, the, uh, the thing is, Canvas Slang is the best place in the world, right? And obviously Springburn, isn't he? So, um... Sorry, <laughs> yeah, on, okay, I was going to say that, like, like, he's become Sam for Springmont. <laughs> we usually have, like, I think, heated There's debate. There's a pretty fierce rivalry to go here, mate. But then, he's just mentioned that it was supposed to be a Springmont flat and it was shot in Camus Line. Like, so it was too dangerous, mate? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, aye, so, aye, but we were shooting in, shooting in town, he didn't. But, but, but we were only getting, it wasn't like people were coming out and going, get to fuck. It was just smell like pure. Obviously, doing at the boat, my high rise, there's like a concierge guy, and he's like, You're not allowed to bring cameras in here. Whenever like, when got that in B- Bulgari Hill, there wouldn't be a concierge no, guy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's been done in, mate. But uh, I will, we will act him like, okay, like, it'll be two minutes. We're not coming in to film a documentary, mate. It'll be literally like, film with us going up the stairs, and he was like, Nah, can he? Flat no. No. But and people, it was like a Saturday morning, mate. So, like, the longer it's taking, people more people are coming in and new, and it's getting busier. And all. you can't just stop the world. Like you'll know that. Like the you want like see that movie clip. Like, you just want that remote and just Aye. to film it, and then that's all you want. I, I noticed in that as well. We were talking about this if it was a pure big thing when Paul's had just done it with a film. Absolutely huge. But <laughs> but uh, like there was points that people were walking by, but I was like at a certain point that I was laughing or something, and I had to try and keep like keep the laughing thing so like people were walking by. And, he was all like, sorry, not, but I couldn't have went and done oh sorry, and then went back to what I was doing, so I just kept going. I'm <laughs> 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 here, like, Aye. try to keep the energy going, do you know what I mean? Because I couldn't help. Did you end doing it, they just kind of like there was a guy, There was a guy who had um, a questionable Gucci belt on, which... <laughs> I don't know. G-Star jeans. Aye, uh, G-Star jeans and that. And he was riding, he was riding a bike about, like he was coming down at the flats, right, get on his bike, cycling to like, the other flats, then cycling back and he was suckling it and he was shouting like, 
he shouted like, "What's that? Eh, Glasgow's most wanted?" Uh, and we're like, "Rosbypon <laughs> gangs now." I was just like, "Aye, mate, aye." But uh, apart from that, there was no like, as you say, like you kind of sometimes you maybe talk yourself into there being issues before you date, and you realise right. that there's it's no you people are usually understand it. Yeah. You obviously just had the issue where people dressed as priests and people coming out like walking poppies and that, which can be an issue. Some mm. some people as well like. I think it's more like curiosity and you, it's like a spider man. Sometimes they're more fear of you because you've got the camera aye. and all that and they're like, but then they want to get a bit of part in. They want their wee bit and you just give them their 15 minutes aye. or other 15 <laughs> seconds. But aye. you get people going by with their phones and all the rest of it. But once you realise, like you're with a team usually and you've mm. got crew and that there. So, but it, you then, it's always in the back of your mind. Like anything could happen here. Like there's no, you're not there with like a studio. You've not got, like says, people shutting down roads. You're not protected. Mm-hmm. So at the same time you're acting, you're filming, you're also like very aware of your surroundings, I'm sure, that you aye. you understand, man. Aye, aye, exi- no, definitely, man. Did you look into anything with the council? For, like, for, did you do anything, like, red, I, I any red them. tape? I emailed them, like, by the way, just to be, like, courteous, but, like, I never answered, like, 2016. I'm not asking it's happening. happening. Did you get red and patched up? I'm on city council. I'm on city council. No, (laughs) I'm on city council. I know. I'm on city (laughs) But then, on the, like, the flip side of that, like, one of my mates, Gary, like, he was making a a short film, and, um, so he he was doing it legit. He went to film school, so he knew Mm. all the people you should contact, and he contacted, like, it was, like, Glasgow Film Board or something. It's nothing to do with the GFT or the festival, but it's like some entity, right, that deals with filming in Glasgow. Um, he's like, I'm a student filmmaker, blah, 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 no budget, doing this. Is it okay to shoot this area? There's like um, Proven Mill or something like that, right? Is it okay to shoot there? And like, it's a uh, £250 like every time you do it. Um, Shut up. Like, flat fee didn't ask. Mate, like, could be, could, this is a below, mate, below was no a, budget film. Mate, who's in Proven Mill? You should have been talking to Arthur Thompson, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Five hundred quid, mate. You can do what you want in problem, mate. But most people that the security and that was sound. Like, is it the fruit market? Is that what that is? The old fruit market? Is that near uh, there? That's a uh, block here, and that's called. Is it's it? like Germiston. Aye. So it was near. It was near there, but I'm sure Proven Mill was another location where he tried to do it legit. It's just up the road for it. Aye. Is it? Sorry, I think he moved up or something, mm. and he got managed to get through the security guard, and that's fine with me and all that. But then he emailed him. It's like, oh no, you can't film here. And I just thought they talk about wanting to encourage young people and all that, and it's like, by the way, just price you out. And it's like you don't not ask anything about this, like what's about, or Aye. just like two hundred fifty quid. And it's like Aye. so short sighted, man. Know. I know Is you could that, have like a full. You could you like you don't know where that might end up, exactly. and it's your community that's yeah. in it. Uh, your big cousin could be leaning the Capri or something. Uh, but they don't know, do they? And they're I just know. like, oh, that's two hundred fifty, and then somebody sends that email and gets paid how much? And you're just yeah. like Aye. sickening, man. Because they just think oh, there's some daft wee boy who want to film something, but. Mm-hmm. That, like that's how everybody starts you're always some daft wee boy that wants to film something and Aye. then you're fucking Spielberg the next Mate, time the, <laughs> there is so much like like, like red tape and that around things like there's mad like, I, I remember when we were talking to Megan Welsh who's like an influencer mm-hmm. right she was talking about like the ad thing that's just came in like you know how you need to say ad oh yeah the fa- after fire festival aye Oh, was that what that was I guess it? that's what brought it in. Aye. Oh, was it really? Aye. I didn't know that. Um, I put that in, and then like and like tunes and that, and all. It's just like everything's all dead. Like it's all these guys sitting in offices going right. You're not allowed to do this, isn't it? Like and it's like putting tax on art and that. Know what I mean? Like as you say, like I want to film a short film. I gives you a week's wage. You know what I mean? It's almost went like the full circle. Where it's like in the early days they were all scrambling because like we've lost record sales, we've lost that, and it's like it's a wild west. Aye. Like Limewire and Napster, you can't. We've lost all our money now. They're gonna get it back. Like with copyright and stuff like that, and even like YouTube. Whereas before, like, I think I listened to, like the odd person saying like I I was making so much money, but now I need to like change this, this, and that. And I've also people have like even like murder documentaries. Mm-hmm. I think what you're saying like censored words, Aye. but there's like kind of like soft. Going on, do you aye, mean when it's aye. like, but this is because it's talk. Sorry, should I say that, mate? <laughs> 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 hey, no, sorry, soft so, pee on here. <laughs> soft <laughs> pee's are so much. <laughs> um, aye, mate, because that's I think like I think there was a thing on YouTube called like, Ad Apocalypse, and it was like pure. Like it was obviously it's just YouTubers that talk about it, but they're like we're just getting any money for ads anymore. Mm-hmm. But then there's like see like Wayne's channels, mate. See oh. if you're like kids friendly. Oh man, is, is it Ryan's, Ryan's toys? toys or or him? Oh. That's mad. I wanted to start. I wanted to turn that's this into a toy channel. Eh? <laughs> it's got to be, mate. We keep getting demonetized. You're the last toy guest. So imagine we brought you in, just had toys. Like, oh, yeah. Lego out. man. You <laughs> got <laughs> <laughs> that'd, that'd have been great. Actually. Escalatrix. Uh, so uh, obviously, <laughs> never mind that movie thing you did. Uh, what about this man? <laughs> that's um, a great setup, man. I'd definitely be up for that. <laughs> a chat and a scalate. That is Paul Morris too. That could be your like hot ones sort of thing, mate. Just play with toys and talk about things. That could be. Actually sounds so good. Man. Sounds actually quite good, doesn't aye. it? Um, but I man, it's like what you're saying with like them sort of like 
picking and choosing what content you can monetize and that. It's like, same with us, mate. Like, we have episodes of this that come out, right? Because, like, what happens... Break, break the YouTube ball down for everyone, right? <laughs> what happens is, once you... Once you, you need a thousand subscribers, right, and four thousand hours watching time before you can get like monetize ads on your video, right? And then what will happen is, see when you see when you're posting something, right? So we'll post like a podcast, and then um, they'll give us like it's like a a red, it's like a dollar sign, right, and it's like a red dollar sign, like a yellow, yeah. and then a green, right? So green means like f- like full ads, like you can get basically any ad on that for an adult. I for an adult because we need to see if it's for kids or adults, right? But then some of them are like, some of them are like, um, yellow, like yellow, right? Mm-hmm. Like the property bosses one, mate, because he just start. He said he there was thirty fucks in that before we even <laughs> go through the first right. minute. What a guy, mate! Um, but unfortunately, demonetized, right? So like. But there's some of them, right? It just doesn't make sense. Like, it happened with Megan Welsh's one. Like, it was green for a while, and then suddenly YouTube are like, nah. I think it, mate, I, I honestly think so. I think it did that with Kaz Mulligan, I don't know. I think it's like... The people any, that junk, Anyone that's... Maybe, actually, I don't know. I the think haters. it's just anyone that's getting decent oh, things. If it's Kaz, like, it'll be the haters. Uh, it will be the haters. It will be the haters. Just... Watch him on BBC Three in the morning, mate. I know. Kaz, <laughs> mate, he's on like um, Love Island. Has that been confirmed yet? Yes. Aye, aye. Oh, aye, it's no, he's made a YouTube video about it and all that, mate. I, I tell the full story, bro. So, <laughs> that's, uh, so, um, I everybody go watch that. Let's plug Kaz. He's showing that. Definitely but, um, aye, it is. It's it's daft, and as you're saying, like just automatically, just a ton of fifty quid. It's just mm. let's. No, I mean, I, I doubt he's like let's make money off him, but it's like these mad regulations and rules that are set in place are like blocking creativity and making it hard for people to produce things it's, it's also like it's almost like uh, did you watch The Wire no no I no, watched I, it it's one of the ones I'm like everybody talks about it and I'm like I, I wish I'd seen it I was you go you've not watched The Wire no, no, I always no, get no. it <laughs> that just puts you off even more man <laughs> but there's a, that's why I've still not seen it <laughs> yeah, people say you don't seen it yet but there's a phrase they use on that and it's called dope on the table and it's like this thing where cops go through and do these petty raids just so they can get a press opportunity and they can sit with like two bags of crack and oh, a gun aye. and they can say look at the job we're doing and it's like but it's like the tip of the iceberg and I feel like that's what they, they, they do a lot of time it's like even with them um, see big films coming to Scotland and they'll say like 100 million was spent in the film industry in Scotland so straight away you think oh Scotland's film industry is doing great we'll have the next so and so coming out of here but then you realise it's like that's just like soft they call it Pop. soft money but it's like <laughs> 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 so it's a tax rebate and it's like people coming and bringing their crews here I do like, you know what I mean what, like Batman and that uh huh so bullshit that people actually think that that was like all filmed here but it was one scene <laughs> was it one <laughs> scene mate I've, I've still not seen it yet still everybody is it. like fuck Glasgow's yeah. people are saying like Glasgow's worth, worth the goth or mate, something was, like that. I seen that tweet like I was just laughing because I thought it was all Glasgow right I was feel laughing somebody said I just know Gotham raffles be popping ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> mad uh, mob deep shit ah, <laughs> grew, underground shit grew up in the streets man brilliant man brilliant I think they're shooting next to like, see crews and that and end they were shooting down there as well but it's that kind of thing they come and they bring a lot of the time they bring crew here maybe they do use some some crew but like, they don't leave any money behind so it's like <laughs> they're saying they can be made a hundred million but then there's not like next directors or next like crew coming up because they don't aye. get brought in aye, it's just like a location thing in it mm-hmm. but it looks good it's a great press article aye, do you it mean? Does. Aye, and exactly then pe- same as that dope on the table mm-hmm. seeing, people right? going to town dressed as Batman and all that <laughs> just stone just like <laughs> waiting to see something picked up maybe driving the Batmobile it's so funny like I hate like people going and like I hate like how about in the back Round there, I flip your mate. <laughs> no that, chance. See that is something in Hobbs. Oh Hobbs yeah, and oh, Hobbs sure. and Ch- I was thinking Russell Hobbs. That's a toaster. Someone I kill. Uh, <laughs> Applied, mate. See when I was getting filmed here, I, I I've never even seen the film, mate. But I was like walking for uni, mate, and I was like walking like that, and a mad woman was like go like that and push me. And I was like walking, and it was mad shit going on. I was like, <laughs> I think I might have been in the background. Date, mate. You're in. <laughs> and you know, obviously the one I kept it. If I'm pure gone. Exchange squares and you're there, no? I mean, aye. I was actually like walking straight through there. I doing like one uh, No, it was at City Chambers, the other side of City Chambers. Oh, is it? Aye. Is it Wonderland there as well? Might have been that. I'm in the background, there many. Why do you think they always choose like, obviously Wonder Woman, Batman, and all? Why do you think they choose, why do you think like Glasgow 
is a good location for that. S- sandstone buildings and cheaper, mm. I think. It's cheaper so to shut down Glasgow than Philadelphia or something. Like what yeah. the sandstone buildings? Was that because Boston and that? I or think it just New fits York? in with maybe that sort of theme. Like the grid system as well. For is that what it is? Ah. Ah. Aye, because... Of course. Aye. Because we're the only... My pal, my pal told me this, like, we're the only... Glasgow's the only... Glasgow and New York are the only cities with a perfect grid... Built on a perfect grid. Oh, but but it's perfect, mate. It's fucking perfect. (laughs) It's a hashtag, mate. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then New York's a laugh. And and what's the other one? Like we, Glasgow and Rome Rome. are the only two cities built on seven hills or something. Is that what it is? I I think I saw something. Aye, mate. What do you mean seven hills? Just mad. Like see, see a hill. Just seven of them, mate. But why? (laughs) Why is that specific? Like it's just brilliant, mate. Is there any built on eight hills? Aye, we don't bother them, but no. eight, eight's, eight's a bit overkill. <laughs> Why fuck me? <laughs> Seven's the perfect number. <laughs> uh, Sensational seven. Aye, but again, like back back to obviously then you filming and that, and then obviously see when you get that done, mate. What is that like? See when you're like done. What is that feeling like? Is it like relief? Is it like joy? Is it? It's, it's mad because I was editing right up until a point. Um, and then I thought I'd be ready for like mastering, it's like so when the, the sound and all it gets perfected. And my mate Lanny, he he did it, um, and like my mate Pat, who helped helped help do the score, they were going to sit in and do it. But I went on holiday, and it wasn't like finished where I wanted it to be. So I waited till I came back. So the full holiday, I'm sitting like, man, like I've still got stuff to do, man. Like I pure wanted to get back. It, it was been horrible, man. It was, but I, I couldn't relax, man. It was, it was quite bad. But I obviously, I had a good time in that. But I kind of came back and I was like, right, what do you still need to do? And then the submission, the latest submission deadline, the, the wait deadline for Glasgow was like the 29th of October, and we were like going right up to the point, like because I'd like six weeks to do the score because someone else was going to be doing it and then I had to like come and do it myself and then get Pat on, on, on board so there was never really a date where it was like that's it done when I submit it to the festival then it's like a new anxiety starts because I'm like what, what if that's it then I, I don't hear for them so what I was just kind of wondering what did you do all the admin shit like that did you right. do like all the contacting people at no. film festival and all that man you had your fingers on every single thing day this press kit and all that but you kind of you need to do it what, do you what mean? is that sorry it's like um i didn't i didn't, when i was starting to look into like what do you do when you've got your film made so you kind of make together like a wee press kit if you have to send out to somebody a bit of background on the film and um, how it was made like uh what it's about budget and all that you include pictures it's like on my website um, they can use it but it's um you kind of get a format for it but it was, that was something new, so that's something I could do on holiday when I was sitting there, like, I got the press kit together and then you can give it to someone rather than me just giving a big long email because here's the press kit, skim through that if you want, Aye. just make it a PDF. Um, so I was doing all that and then, like I say, came back and I submitted it and then it was not till like six weeks later, the like, start of December, then I, I got an email when I was like, away um, saying to me get in. So that was like, even then I didn't really sink in. Like my, my missus was like excited about it and I was just kind of like, a bit numb, like, oh, fuck, like I don't know, I don't I, know how no he feels. Do, do you know what it is? There's a question about Ash as well. Just, but see, just it must just be like you've spent years in this, right? And it's all came to but this sort of one moment, mm-hmm. and they've said I, and it's like seven. It's like how many years? Like five, five years. Aye, so, aye, five years, five five years to this one point, and that's how probably it's hard to sink in because you're like this full time for this one moment of them saying I, and obviously it's amazing, but you're like. It's can't even it's process it. Too monumental. Uh, even get but them, but as well, I wanted to ask, like, because you keep saying about like um, you're on holiday, but you're thinking about it and that. Do you think at times, obviously, it was your baby and that, but do, were there people around you going like, you need to kind, you need to turn off sometimes, you need to switch off? Like, uh, were you getting like obsessive with it? I, like, my wife, when I was editing, like, I was like up to like three most nights, like just working mm-hmm. and then coming into it, and I was just like, right, when I get to this stage, it'll be sound. I mean, but that's like. The go to for everyone, it's like when I get to this in my life, what but it's never yeah. man. You, mean, you need to find the balance, but personality. Yeah, and I, I think so. To get to that, I'll be, it's like, and it is, it's like, well, it's like when this is, up, this is like my last hit, do you know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> kind of the way it, it feels in a way, but I think also because I knew my biggest thing was like, if this doesn't work out, and it's because you were sitting on your ass watching telly, trying to be good to yourself when you could have been doing a bit of work, and that's like that's a killer, man, because it, you just keep going till you die, oh, definitely. Yeah, man. and also, like, you also think, like, how's how hard is like. How hard do you work? Like how hard, how much is a hundred percent? Because I used to work in a hospital, um, and there's like pain charts, and you know it's like, do you feel like this? And it's like that's a one, and this is a ten. So it's like, how bad is your pain? And the guy's like, oh, it's a twelve, it's a twelve. And it's like nobody's got no concept of like how much is like a hundred percent or how Aye. much. So you think to yourself, I'm doing my maximum, and there's always that worry. But I mean, I suppose Aye, you need to regulate know, that. That you could be, and obviously, fucking every day on Instagram, that you get these quotes, pure, you, like the mad. The, 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 see this, sto- see this story about like 
a guy walks into the water and it's like you need to need to want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, breathe aye, right. like, shit like that so obviously this shit and it's the same way as with this podcast mate like even my girlfriend will be like we'll be like out for out for something to eat and like i'll be what i'll be like two seconds i just need to like tell joe about this edit or like but and she's like you need to like you need to like switch aye. off and i'm like i know but you they get caught in this trap of like i want to give you everything i've got but at the same time it's like sometimes Sometimes when you day balance it properly, that does mean you're gaining everything. Uh-huh. Because there's been times it's like you're thinking, even like me making videos, not like you're you almost see when you're trying too much or you're trying you're spending too much time in it. Fair dues, you might be putting a hundred percent effort in, but the quality isn't going to be a hundred percent because you're fucking half sleeping trying to do things in it. Mate, this is so unrelated, right? But I was listening to a podcast <laughs> today that had uh, Tony Adams, the old like Arsenal legend, mm-hmm. and he was talking about it, and he was saying like about. When they won the league, pure years like ninety one or something, it was like, and then it, the, the year after that, it was like I tried a hundred, hundred times harder than I had, ever had, mm-hmm. and it was like and then we didn't win the league for six years, and then I done, then I started like meditating, chilling out, going on holiday with my bird, no focus on it too much, and then they won the league in ninety eight, mm-hmm. and he was saying it was like I just worked too hard that mm-hmm. full time, you know what I mean? Like you hear that sometimes, like oh, I'm just working too hard and that, but Aye. like I think it can actually have an adverse effect on kind of your what you're doing in a way. Man. Do you know what I mean? It could have. Look at. Uh, Look at John Jones, like said he was like high and steaming the mm-hmm. week before every fight. Usain Bolt eating chicken nuggets, playing the PlayStation. Aye. And you're like, is he lying? Is he throwing me off? But then you're also, then you're thinking, oh, well, I've not got his genetics or I've not got his adv- advantages, so I need to work twice as hard. Aye. Aye. And you're like, all that wasted time, like your life's going by, man. And then, oh. like I say, the result comes, and no, that it wasn't amazing, like it was uh, great. But you think to yourself, imagine that I'd like, broke up with my missus and like I told all my pals that like, you're scum I'll finish it myself and I'll do this and I said right I'm putting everything into it and you're like for that like one moment which is amazing yeah. you hope it does stuff for you but then like that's all the good shit do you know I mean like yeah. every day stuff, it's pure cheesy man but no, it is I get, no, yeah, I get you can like ruin I can like as I'm saying we're like no look my girlfriend's ever up here I'm fucking splitting up because mm-hmm. this podcast but like you can't let it pure put strains on mm-hmm. like like because these are the people that are going to be there after all this as well yeah, you know yeah, what I mean so and also like they're like these people that you're saying your girlfriend your pals like especially in the case of your pals and all that if they helped you get to the place that you were like that you had the opportunity to give you 100% so mm-hmm. if you went to the line and done fuck all you just get to fuck you'd have been halfway through a film and they fucking I know, and what's, what's <laughs> you know the what point? Mean? but then there would be some people that would get to that point do you do, do you think because I think just relating it to like our podcast right like it's obviously says Riley's gaff right but I know that Jamie and also feel ownership of this as well do you think your pals kind of did as well like or do you think they were like fuck I better just do what you say so like do you think they were like no like they kind of felt like it was their thing as well well I always tried to when I speak about it but like our film and that and like we did this and I always tried to because like you wouldn't you wouldn't do it yourself do you mean it's just like you might be like the director or whatever but it's such a collaborative thing like there's no chance you'd be getting anywhere near it and they like they, they made it what it was and I hope they do feel that sense of ownership and I kind of I don't know, it's like, what, what else do you do? Like, you can't pay them, but I just always try to show like, gratitude towards them and like whatever's happening, like try and put them in the spotlight or try and shout them out as much as possible. But it's um, it's a tough one. But I mean, there's so much like mixed information like yeah. about like how you should be like running your life and like how much you should be doing. Because even talk about like, working too hard and that, it's like half the time you spend thinking you're doing this really hard work is probably just stressing. Like the way you said, efficiency would probably go up if you did take that mm-hmm. and do like maybe two solid hours rather than saying I need to be sitting for 10 hours and then you're just staring at his space. It's like, well, just go away and take a break. But I think Aye. that takes like maturity or I don't know. Aye. It's interesting. Like la- I think last week you were, t- it was the Acorn or something you were saying. Like, I don't know who, who's it M&M. taught them. M&M taught them. Like, so like, see when you get into rap, like Acorn, like, Looks at it like shifts, didn't he? Uh, no, Akon like would be going into the studio at like three in the morning and drinking Hennessy and all that and mm-hmm. like doing all this stuff and then or like now you always hear like we're in the studio all night and all that mm-hmm. and then he goes but then he done that tune with me. Um, smack that, smack that all on the floor, smack that. Give me some more. That, oh, Till beautiful, you get sore. Beautiful song. I Akon was like going into the studio at like th- like staying in there all night and all that right and then when he done the tune smack that with Eminem. Yeah, he said Eminem would go in at 8 in the morning, they'd have like a lunch with him and that, and he would take a, a new break at 1 o'clock and then he'd go home at 5, and then it was at one point that Eminem was literally like in the middle of doing a verse, and he just done, alright, like that, and then went away, and then the next day when he came in at like 8 in the morning, Akon was like, why did you go away at like 5 in the dot? He was like, this is my job, so I'm going home with my family and that. Right, so it's that mad, if it, like, it's that mad why like this is the time I'm dedicating to this and no more because I need that balance or no less like Aye. he was treating it like Aye. an actual like he was 
his own boss, he was supposed to be there at that time, do you know what I mean, he was putting in that work, but then it wasn't, because if, if you do, like, obviously taking it further ahead and speculating about, like, rappers and that, if you do go, like, all night, p- taking drugs and boozing aye. and all that, obviously Fuck it's affecting your... it's a week off for one good night, aye. one aye. productive night. Aye, exactly, exactly. But we hate drugs, don't we? I mean, no, don't condone that. We'll see you later anyway. <laughs> 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 it's it's anyway. Shift. But uh, it, is, it is hard, because it's uh, like, uh, you, it would have been the exact same for you. It's hard to, because it's no a place that you go and clock in and clock out, it's like, there's no a time limit on it. So it is hard to know, like, d- uh, can I switch off the new? Am I... Am I, and it's Aye. the same thing like you're talking about like if I switch off I'm no gain 100% and I, I need to gain 100% because this is my thing and it's because you're also working as well it's Aye. like I need to ideally my ideal scenario would to do like an 8 hour shift I mean you could do it every day then your productivity would be so high but Aye. it's like being able to regulate like how efficient are you working for that long mm-hmm. but I can, that makes a lot of sense like what he's saying like just saying that's me and that's probably the key to like longevity because even like weight loss and all that like the first time you think right I need to cut down on that it's like right all chicken breast and broccoli I'm going to punish myself and all that and then you realise like whatever like later on it's like balance and that's how the people that kind of stay in shape like a lot uh, longer do you mean no they have a good balance it's not sustainable it's no, like it's not. that's what all, like a lot of like you're saying like a lot of PTs would say like I, I don't think like a lot of PTs would ever try and put you on a diet like that like because they're like you shouldn't be on you shouldn't be on a diet it, exactly. your diet it should just be your diet Aye. like that is just what you eat Aye. and try to do all that stuff to yourself it is the same you burn yourself out and then that's how you fall off and you compensate do you mean Aye. mate see just talking about like going back again to like um, like planning everything out right and going like can you be here at this time and stuff right see like I the reason I like can I get my head run how you made that for home is like see what we go through planning just a guest here or just us here and like having like a studio yesterday. booked and all that mate see being able to go right well then this scene then can all use make it there and i'll come there and all that mate like that must have been so so stressful uh, i no, actually can't was, imagine i mean as you also relate to it but there's so many variables and you can't hold it against them like somebody not not well somebody's got a family emergency do you know i mean like Fucking you can selfish off. pricks man I mean, you know I mean? like that's the way you're kind of you kind of react to that. <laughs> but uh, even though you might be feeling that way to like, the universe or whatever but uh you kind of just think like it's a shot in the dark do you mean and it worked out in our favor a lot of the time but then you had to adapt and be like right okay you kind of make it here and towards the end it was like right i'll shoot you two in the morning and then we'll get the reverse of that two hours later when you can finish work and then we'll get this scene there I mean, imagine planning that out it was a, like, it was a hard, conversation man. nine hours apart honestly <laughs> And then crossing seasons, like sometimes you only finish a day and then it's like a season changes and all that. And you're like, you just kind of need, you just need to give it up to be like, right, that's us then. Like, I was going to ask that, were you happy when it started snowing? Because now you can get like a snow scene. Well, that was, I always thought minimum it'll be a year to shoot. And I'd always wrote in like a winter scene. I just thought it might snow one day. So I was always ready to go and I always had my camera and I was like, right, I'm going out. But I was in Coat Bridge at this point. I just drove away and it took a half day and just got the drone out, man. I was like, today's the day to get the weather. But Joseph said that as soon as we walked out, he was like, I bet it was buzzing. It was snowing one of the days. Right. <laughs> it was like three different days, man. I was like, thank fuck, man. That's, that. a, that's the difference between him watching it and us because we all like, oh, I bought me sausages. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I bet he was really grateful it snowed that day. The drone shot. My favourite thing about the film thing was seeing you dressed like you like a director. You had like a wee kind of polo neck oh, on and a black jacket oh, and that. I like a proper yeah. director. <laughs> <laughs> Turning around, everybody was clapping me like that and all that. <laughs> it was beautiful, but even to me, see, just feel like, um, like finding out it was in the film festival, and then like, how? So how how long like did you find out it was until the premiere? How long was that period of time? So it's like. Th- it was like my anniversary with my missus and it was like the 10th of December, like the day before it. And then they tell you like it's embargoed, like nobody can speak about it until they announce it, which is like middle of Jan- end of January. Mm-hmm. And then from then it was like March, so maybe like four months. But then during that time, like you're saying, like when you feel like it's done, but then it's the next task, because then I'm the PR guy, do you know what I mean? I'm the one who to kind of sell it and try and make, get people through the door. So then I'm, I'm taking off like my kind of hypersensitive writer, director, artist, blah, 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 and putting on like the producer hat and be like, roll up, roll up, everybody, do you know what I mean? That's, so you're kind of thinking, right, how do I get this out here? Who do I need to contact? Um, if we're going to have like an after party, would we need to do buses and all, like what are we doing? Like who are we bringing in? Um, so you're starting to think about other things. So it's a new challenge as soon as that's done. Yeah. And you see you with the PR and all, mate, you were everywhere. Oh. Like, my, like Joseph's, my man, he was going, I hear a, 
I was just watching this boy, this lovely boy on STV, you know. That's <laughs> yeah. so, bro, I'm, I'm going to see the film a day. Like, <laughs> sorry, man. Like, yeah. we, 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 actually, we all took the day off work to come and see it, mate. Oh, so, mate we actually so much, took man. a holiday Thank and work. Thank so you so it much. Was, it, was, uh, it was brilliant, mate. And just, so see, just even that first day, like, what are you feeling sort of leading up to that? Like, in the morning you wake up, you're trying not to burn the sausages, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what, an what a breakfast, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> mate, how good did that breakfast look? I cooked look? all that morning, man. <laughs> I didn't get hit, but it was freezing cold. Oh, but man. Man. <laughs> Total like, waste. Can you shoot it and that? But, like, see that morning leading up to, like, the first showing and that? Mm. Like, what's going through your head? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Or? you kind of, like, you're... Everything. Do you not get Tony Robbins, but you're like visualizing. Do you know I mean, you're kind of trying to anticipate what it's going to be like. But I was supposed to be doing like a thing at UWS, and they says, "Can you make it that day?" And I was going to do it, but thankfully, it got cancelled. I would be going to and coming back, and I'd be like rushing a bit like mad. But thankfully, I had like the morning off. I just went like a walk and stuff, and I was pretty calm to be honest. Like more people were anxious for me, um, and I also kind of felt the confidence that like, the mate, my mates, like would be hypercritical or not in a bad way, but they would kind of tell me if like this is bad or this is not working. They liked it when I screened it for them. Um, Nicola, my wife, like, she really liked it, and like, again, she would say if she thought it didn't work, so I had a wee bit of confidence. And the festival said it was good, that like, they wanted it, um, and they were quite complimentary about it. So I thought it's in the festival, do you know what I mean? And they've kind of gave you a seal of approval, so it's not like you're debuting it in front of nobody for the first time. So I thought I think it's going to be okay. And then like it was just a whirlwind, like you kind of turn up and you see like the fe- the film theater was packed out. Like I've never seen it that busy. Like everyone, I turn like everybody I know and like family and that cast. I'm saying like, how you doing? So you're seeing everybody for a split second, and then you're turning it's like pictures out red carpet. It's like, oh, you need to come in, you need to introduce the kids and that. And then it's like you got a drink there, and it's, so it's just like, but I end it. Then I'm standing up, and I'm sort of watching the audience as it's the film's going on, and then you get up, and then you're, you're drinking, you're talking. Oh, it just goes by in a flash, man. It must amazing. be meant. I cause like I never thought about that, but like. We came to, it was like the second showing, wasn't it, mm-hmm. that we went to? But that first one, you must have no watched it. You must have just been like, ah, looking for everybody's reaction. Nah. Do you know what was, do you know like what was fun? We were like laughing at, Joe got actually got annoyed at this point, mate. There's a vet, now you were saying like, <laughs> you, you shifted you, aye, So like, you know how you were saying, now you were saying about like the 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 moment, like you're trying to mix sort of dark, gritty moments with a bit of humour on that, mm-hmm. right? There's a pure big moment at the end. I can't even remember exactly what it was. Like, right. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it in it, right? But like, something really like sad happens, and then some. I swear, one person just done because <laughs> like it was as if they didn't know whether they were, whether they were supposed to laugh but or. Then, but then Joseph done. You can't do that. I, he literally, he literally, <laughs> he literally turned around. I just heard him. You fucking can't do that. We're, we're hunting for attackies next to my boss, man. You can't do that. That's my attacky, Joseph. <laughs> you can't do that. The tackies are done, Joe. <laughs> no, but I, I just found that so funny at the time. And I found his reaction so much funny because I just, you can't do that. So, so pe- good. people that have said that, I even like people that review it and like certain bits and it's a risky take obviously if you make something that's like bizarre at some points and then you're trying to be sincere at others and then they're like oh this bit I think it was like slapstick and all that and I was like no it wasn't but then you kind of get annoyed at that because that's the interpretation Aye. I think people that get it get it do you know what I mean so you just need to leave it in leave it in their hands do you know what I mean it's not my choice anymore I mean that um, what you were saying like that red carpet getting drinks handed to you I wish I could uh I wish I could have just took care for you just for that day. No, all the stress <laughs> I'm making you film and that, but see being the guy... Just on to be you. The, see being Man, the guy... Man, you turned up there's a guy kidding on it was his movie, no, mate. You no, done no, like, he's, 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 uh, no, hired murdered him. He's hired me for this just to like, have a wee break. <laughs> aye. So that's what I would have liked today, being like, I, I done all this. This was all me. I look a bit different now. This was seven years ago. <laughs> Where the kids is like, ah, no, they were only in it for like fucking two minutes, man. I, I was in the fall thing. All the actors are like, you just go away. Just go away. He and knows, so he knows you're, you're in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, even like obviously you had the kids playing the kind of younger versions you used at the start. Were they just like child actors? Or, aye, so uh, the Theatre School of Scotland is like a group. What I would do is I would. Um, is that Re- is it Reece Dor- Reece aye, Reece, do you know Reece, aye, aye, aye. Aye. aye, So it was like I know him. Um, I don't know the, the the boys that like run Exceed. Have you heard Exceed Footwear in town? Aye. So that's like my like my brother-in-law kind of pretty much, and um, he knows Reese, and um, they did, did a lot of work together. So I got to know him, um, and I would sort of do like PR stuff, and like I. Do like we corporate videos for the school, and I say like I don't want paid or anything like that, but can we can we work with the kids for the film? He's like no problem. He was always like I know not a problem anytime, and I was always like thinking this is probably could be the thing that you should cut out a film because 
to have an immediate like time leap mm-hmm. yeah because that like weak storytelling and all the rest of it but i always kind of felt like that's where it should start and i thought it's probably gonna be the hardest thing logistically but it was the easiest thing like they were like total pros and like the youngsters like on river city and all that so they were like the most professional actors I was, beat my I was, brats now but that is a fucking <laughs> oh, they're, they're <laughs> man. i was gonna say like i've heard stories i think it was like adam sander taught about it and he's taught about like when you get child actors that are pure professional he's like they freak me out he's like because he's like uh, he's sitting playing basketball and another wee guy walks by with like a a croissant and a coffee like that like uh, you have to be on set and all that. <laughs> was that like that like these wee professional like actors like well, they had good balance because they weren't like um pure theater do you mean like they right. were they had the great skill but they were just wee guys do you mean like they were playing like that among us on the, the bus and uh, all in between yeah. it and that do you mean so they were just like wee like great great wee guys and they were just up for it and they were adding wee bits of dialogue in it's like what, what if i done this and all that and i was like fire uh, in like, that's brilliant you was, man, of course because if they're just like that and the worst thing could be is like pure wooden but we rehearsed quite a lot and stuff so i knew they were they were dynamite and then we got all that done like pretty much in a day or two so mm-hmm. and they were magic but um it's always the things you're not like anticipating. Do you know what I mean, it's always the things that are going to be the hardest. But scheduling was like, getting people together, as you all know, is like the hardest thing. I can imagine that being brutal, man. Aye. That is. I think that's what puts most people off. You probably hear about you. You could probably speak to a million people saying, um, "I've got an idea for this," or "I we we went to do that and it fell apart." And like, because it is like that to stick with it. It's like you don't know what's going to turn up. Aye. The boys didn't know there was going to be a premiere. If I told you you're guaranteed a premiere, then maybe you think oh, this may be quite good. But it could have been I mean, nothing by the end I of it. To believe in it. Class mm-hmm. for them sticking with you and that. I know, I know they have pals and stuff, but like it is a pure aye. A big ass for the amount of time oh, and stuff. Huge, it. man, it's huge. Um, I and so see when you seen it, like obviously you, I suppose you'd seen it, but like after that first premiere and that, like the one we were in, there was a there was a round of applause. I'm guessing it was there was one the first one as well. Yeah, it was. Were you, what does that feel like? Just a full room of people clapping because I, I mean, I kind of felt proud and it wasn't even my movie, mate. I was kind of like, this is Aye. brilliant. That's <laughs> what I'm saying when I seen like dressed like a like because now when you see like directors not dressed it's like the, well, like the polo necks and the jackets and stuff i was like yeah, it actually looks like a director man obviously <laughs> you, an are, director. you are but like yeah, it was when you're turning around that i was like pure don't even know who you are man. <laughs> <laughs> my boy man <laughs> <laughs> but i the that the, even the one we were at was pure packed and everybody you know i feel like i know it was like during the day and there was uh, hundreds of people were in boozing and all that uh, like, aye, like, that's a good thing about <laughs> in there isn't Definitely, it like, just do what you want but i think i think because it felt like a group effort it didn't feel like all eyes on me i mean i almost felt like I. it was such a huge cast and i was like delighted for the youngsters their parents were there and then my mates were there and like they got to get it because almost to me it's like i got the reward of getting in the festival do you mean so i, I almost got on it sort of thing. Do you i mean like I, that, that's that sound but for them to be part of something that people enjoyed like that was a huge thing it was class but because i remember like we were sitting um and obviously i had I had people's hands flying in for everywhere at that moment, right? But I could just see, like, at certain bits, like, two rows in front, like, somebody be like, ah, that's, that's in there. Oh, yeah. like, taking a picture and that. So, like, oh, it, yeah, I, yeah, like people, like, reco- like, 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 picture. Like, like, if it was a boy or something that was on the screen, mm. do you know what I mean? The uh, like, there was, screenshot. There was uh, somebody, mate, there was somebody, right? And they must have been, like... They were pirating uh, I, They were beat, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, like, there was somebody, like, five minutes into it, right? Somebody in front of us was, like, recording a bit, and I was like, oh, they're just, um must just be somebody they know in it and that and then it was i was like are they going to stop recording at one point but, but they did they did at one point it was like they'd recorded like two minutes or something but i was like i was like i was like she's recording a bit much here, mate. <laughs> mate see when um like paul doc came on and then when the twins came on uh, the twins when the yurts came on sorry Aye. just the twins that's what they're universally known as <laughs> twins. when you say twin jenka yurts no but when they came on i was thinking like oh, i'm gonna get my phone out i think i'd done that to you or something and then i was like and I was like, pure I'm not supposed to do this. Like, <laughs> that's pure no. That's like, like you wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't rob a granny. Mate, I was howling at um, Sean in it, man. Oh my god, oh, mate. Dude, Just a, so yeah. 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 Me. <laughs> what is he saying? Uh, there's shit. Uh, there's shit holes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he says like, we'll speak about the service later. Yeah. Oh, to, uh, but I was because we were on that boat FM. Shout out boat FM, by the way. You fled radio station in Black Hill Community Centre, one hundred six point seven FM. Don't know how to do that. Wow, that's yeah. pro. <laughs> um, so we were on Boat FM, me and Sean, mm-hmm. and I don't know why. I think somebody was asked. I, I the Wayne's were in, like asking about the podcast and stuff, and I mentioned that you were coming on, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, let's talk about that on the radio for yeah. a bit." And I says to, I says to Sean, and I, I didn't realise it was like 2017 or something. He was doing that. It was like years ago. He was on it. I was, was it three years ago? Maybe. I maybe it was like. 2020 maybe I think oh, that was it three. Do you know what year it is mate? He said like three years ago So 2019 <laughs> like. um, yeah, I know it does didn't it um, Oh Covid not. <laughs> no but he said And I think he said something like It was pure years ago And I just pictured like uh, that Kind of time mm-hmm. But um, So he's had that year Part of for that long Oh mate I thought that was a new thing for that's him That's like 
the baby because I wrote that in the script and I was like because yeah, it was always written for them they two they'd be a like twin pre- a priest and a deacon or like a trainee <laughs> priest and uh, but I'd written like a longer scene um, but it's just that it was too that moment is like kind of touch and go do you mean you need to keep momentum up but I had to cut like a joke um, and it was like him and Ben and um, it's like Ben's got a, a green collar on I don't know if you can uh, see it and he's got a white collar on and then um, like Sean goes like that Sean says something like, um, "What you do? Um, what you doing now then?" And then he goes, uh, "Yes." And then I say something to Ben, and he goes, "That's right, my son." And Sean goes, "Ah, ah, ah not until you get your white collar." And he just fucking <laughs> turns out. And I had to cut it because it was like a fear. Right then, going into like, that's when the tonal thing I had to bring it back. <laughs> but there was so. I'm even looking at it. It was honestly, he's you like called Lawrence sure in it. Well. Have they always been like that? So I've I've known I met them in like 2016. Their friend, see John, that's in it, plays Don, the tall guy. He's um his sister Emma is like good friends with them, and I met them at her birthday party, like 21st or something, years and years ago. But I'd seen them on Twitter and stuff like that, and they're just that, that's not like a Twitter thing. Like they they'd walk in a room and doesn't matter who'd be there, oh. they're just naturally that that right. funny. Like I, it just comes at them. Man. I've never met people that are like see like see like me right. I I'll make videos right, but I like get exhausted making one video right. I don't see Sean and that they're on all the time, mate. Like they don't turn they don't turn it off. Like mm. you'll be like I I'll, I'll like, want to go for a walk or something in Queens Park. I'll be like I need ball and I'll just be drinking a coffee and I'll just I'll just help you. And what's your thoughts on the, on the weather today, yeah? And I'll be turning around and there's a camera in my face. I'm like, what, mate? Like, are we, doing, are we doing this? Or like, Sean did it um, on that Vote FM thing again. Like, I was playing with the faders and stuff for like, a tune coming up. And he goes, James, what are you doing? The radio show has not started yet. And I was like, I need to try and be funny now. I'm just putting his vote in. But he, but he could just see if you put a camera on him, mate. Aye. Or Ben as well, mate. They would come up with something it's maybe so funny. Un- unforced. Aye. I think the great thing with them is like they've said it to me before and I, like, I genuinely believe it. But well, they could take and leave it. See if somebody came up to them and something they didn't want to do and they put like money in front of them. Well, I'm not asked. Like, I like my job and I, I like what I'm doing. It's like they almost feel like just totally like we're just doing this to make ourselves laugh. Aye, they really Aye. are in it for that because like... I'm in it for the fame, mate. Get on, eh? but I'm. Um, <laughs> but see, 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 like um, when obviously they would make videos, but like they would never post them. Like they, they would post them thing. in a way they would like they would make a wee daft story, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mate, that is like a full sketch. Like mm-hmm. you could post and like and they're just like, I like fuck, I don't really. Is that? Right. Right. I don't <laughs> really yeah. care. And now, then, I, they've started now. They've like got their page and that, but even that, at that, like, I think they really just love making each other laugh in that moment, mm-hmm. and which is amazing. <laughs> aye. Um, but there's such a fine line. We see people that are like the funniest people in the pub. And then being able to go in front of a camera, like if you find out like, the funniest people are never like they never become stand ups like that. Um, um, it's an HBO things like Seinfeld and like Chris Rock and all talking about aye, it. Are talking like, funny? I uh, talking funny, aye. and he says like you're not the funniest kid in your class. Like no, no, it was no. this one guy and, and all he used that. To pee on, pee on me in the yeah, shower, yeah, 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 like, yeah, in the shower. I mean, I was talking about that talking funny yesterday oh, because of the Chris Rock thing. That's, aye, that's he's in it. it. Aye, he's him and the other boys. Aye, because we we're talking about Chris Rock and Ricky Gervais and. I, I, I was talking about that. I think it's all them in it and a controversial fi- figure in Louis C.K. I think that's him that says that in it. Aye, it says uh, like the funniest thing is he was like standing in the shower and a boy just like nudged him like that and, and he was like pissing on another <laughs> boy. <laughs> and he was like, to this day, that's the funniest that thing ever. Funny, like, really and then he's getting said, pissed on. And then Jerry Seinfeld said, like, he's out there, he's still pissing on people. <laughs> going, Louis C.K. finds this funny. <laughs> so funny, <laughs> to this man. Day. I, no, you know his pals like, I told you I went to school. <laughs> but they're the guys who went and like, had to refine their act. And like, were, like, I, like I, I find myself, I have, I'm definitely, like, I want to please uh, the crowd. I mean, I don't make some, like, it's, it's, there's an effort, do you mean, like, to try and get them in? But they're the guys like that, and it's like, to get somebody like the Europe so that they can then come in and be like, when you turn the camera on, they maintain it. Do you mean they're just as I funny? Know, exactly. It's not like they don't freeze and like they just like they keep it going. How good's Paul Dockett acting, man? Ah, he's like, great, man. See his mad face and that and all like, when he was doing that thing because he was like a. He's got I'm, a I'm, great Paul's got a great concerned look in his face. Look, because like, like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like an arms dealer or something. And yeah. like, like, he, was, he was giving them the weapons and that, and he was like, right boys. <laughs> he, he's another guy that doesn't he, like. He's the same. He's the same consistent. Like he's, just, you know, he's not like a mad act for Twitter or that. It's just like no. that's, I think this is funny. Would you think? I when you meet, see when you meet Paul Doc, you'll, you you realise it's it's no, it's the exact same person that's in all the videos. It's Mate. no like a hangy put on. He's no. um, like I've pure noticed about him and all. Like when you're saying about the funniest guy in the room and that, like when I first met him, he just like came up to me and done. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking about this right. Uh, 
so this thing happened and then just tell me it and I'm like that's the funniest thing I've heard in ages like I tell people but like, if I thought of that I'd be like everybody sit down and yeah. listen to what I've just thought I know no, what I mean it was, uh, mate Connor Riley came in here and he was telling us a story about Paul Doc and he says like the first time I think it was like the first time we met him he came up to him and says right I've got this idea mate right it's like a PlayStation, right? But it's haunted. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was just like, "Is this coming?" <laughs> Which is class, but no, no, you made some, you made some good decisions for the for the cast, definitely. Uh, but see, after just that first premiere, like, what sort of feedback were you getting, and like, sort of reviews and that? Is it all? Is it all been good? Really? It's been pretty much. I mean, the audience feedback's been like really good. I mean, there's been a couple of reviews, um, like like one woman I don't think watched the film started talking about people want to come and take control of the drugs in the town and all that, and she she hated it, and I just thought she switched off and just thought oh this is this kind of film and I do think people maybe think it's an all boys film it's all about their partner and them in rooms and like the only lassies in it is like she's like looking after an elderly person and one's like a prostitute but then the guy's a prostitute in it as well do you mean like they're all in it they're all ridiculous yeah, that, do you mean he was good as well that boy with a mad feather <laughs> <laughs> Dom, <laughs> it's Dom Cullen yeah, he's funny but I think some people you're going to get it you're not I think that's kind of I've learned with people reviewing it it's like if you're going to throw your hat in the ring, you need to be able to take it. Do you mean so? If they don't really fully get it, but hopefully, just that people that do like it and people that like kind of comedy yeah. and get that scenario will be into it and tell yeah. people. Well, see, see with film, sorry, even see with film critics, do you ever think like what I would think is shows your film in? Do you never think stuff like that? No, no, because it's that thing like I forget if you like played shite at football and then some like. 50 stone guy was like you're rubbish you can't turn around and say I'd like to see you do it because it's objective do you know what I mean Aye. like and it's up to them so I, and I do think great I don't think they're all great critics I'll put it that way I, I think great criticism is like a great artist do you know what I mean like it takes years and it's like a, it's a real art in itself so I do respect the ones that are good but the ones that like aren't getting it and are no, being lazy do. I'm just like that well fair play do you know what I mean Aye. it's up to you Aye. and you do really like you do really need to get that sort of mad hard exterior like just needs to bounce off you because mm -hmm. it, it is hard when you put all that. You're smiling, man. <laughs> you know, mate. <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Kelly struggles with that a bit. There's a story, mate. The, <laughs> the very first podcast we ever done, right? Somebody commented like worst worst trims in Scotland or something, right? And he, mate. But I've been making videos for years, right? So I've heard like oh, everything, right? Like it, people just throw things out to get your attention, right? Whatever. I don't think the person who wrote that really thinks me and Jamie have the worst haircuts in Scotland, right? But Jamie phoned me and he was like, Did you fucking see what somebody commented in that video? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What is it? And he's like, fucking worst terms in Scotland, mate. And I was like, just ignore it, mate. Eight likes, Evan. Just get eight likes, mate. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the other thing, but you need to remember, it's almost like a heckler in the, the, the crowd of stand-up. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're playing to a crowd in there and they're almost like what to prove that they're just as funny but by, by being anonymous but they don't want they can't commit to going on stage Aye. or that I'm not saying that everyone's got a comment is wrong but I'm saying them saying that it's almost like I'll get this in here and that'll Aye. get my ego do you like know what I mean equal. that's a very well, good like uh, it's happened again it's happened again uh, I phoned Morgan today I phoned my girlfriend today I've recently took to making TikToks right Evan knows I've got over 700 likes on one of them right yeah, so and then the second okay. one I've got over 100 likes but all right I know you've wrote a film but 800 <laughs> likes between two TikToks mate right Phenomenal. and on the second one somebody commented Ollie Ball here and then another guy commented he does look like Ollie Ball do you know Ollie Ball? oh it's Ollie Ball here it's Ollie Ball here I phoned Morgan and I said I'm never making a TikTok again <laughs> I've deleted the app I'm greeting in my room oh, <laughs> no. he messaged me like do you think I look like Ollie Ball and I had just read the comment and I was like mate you need to, uh, you need to either take it or leave it, brother. <laughs> leave it. Seven hundred likes, man. That's what you're gonna get, man. Oh, man that's the it price. felt so good getting really? that seven hundred likes. Your ticket, <laughs> Ollie Balls, like Big Brother or something. There's your TikTok. Collab, man. Aye. Get a mullet, man. Ah, he did. I think it is just that I've no had a fresh fade to Mills and Co. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this I is also your first venture into like in terms of doing something like Aye, online, so you're hype gonna be hypersensitive because it's like I'm you're seeing heaven about me. Hypersensitive anyway, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very sensitive young man. <laughs> no, no, but, but we what all it should are, have man. been called sensitive young men. Be <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Should have just been people like saying match night comments. Uh, I like different gangs. Uh, Worst trims in school. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. raging, look, he's raging earlier. I thought, mate, like fantastic we walked we we watched it and we walked out and we were just like that was fucking unreal like right, especially you. like with the content because i know you're like there's a lot of things in it that you if you're just used to seeing big massive budget movies you might be like what the fuck but if you go in it with the mindset of like knowing that you've done this all off your own back it's just like 
It's almost unbelievable how you managed to pull it together. Aye, I was I was confused for a good couple of weeks. How did, how did he <laughs> James doing sums in his house now? <laughs> did they make all the bats in his house or something? Aye. Like that? Did aye. you? Aye. Did you actually? <laughs> that has answered one of the questions. Then what did you make them? Was it yeah, styrofoam? Screw fix. It was um, like PVC pipe, and then like, I did a few tests and like got a quite a smack me over the back with because I wanted to see would it hurt and I bought it so but if it looked if it was stiff enough but then it could still not hurt somebody so I just end up being like pipe um, insulation around aye. a PVC pipe and then just taped it up but then there, some of them were like woods as well like so for some shots but I nah, just mixed it up aye. Um, who was it that I was talking to and they were saying like I was talking to somebody else who went to the I think they went to the premiere and they were saying like how hard that is to do fight scenes and like it was me, I think. Was it you? Were you seeing that? Aye, because see in the see in the fly video, we had to do a scene where we kidnap Big Miz mm -hmm. and see how hard it is to like make it look like you're really fighting and hitting each other without actually doing that is really like That's we had to film man. it like maybe and this might be nothing to you like how many things we filmed it, but we must have filmed that one bit like six times just because we did it and then we'd be like it didn't look like we really tumbled him. It looks like he's cooperating with us. Aye, that's the thing. Aye, because you need a stunt double if you. <laughs> no, it's, that's right. Um, but it, but it is because also you, you don't want to hurt them. But then if you look like that, it's like oh, come on, Matt. Do you mean that's the first thing you see? But it's, it's it takes a lot. But we look. We had a guy right to see the guy that plays like Tinto, the guy in the red mask at the front. Uh -huh. He was like an ex wrestler, so he was like, "Do what you want to me." He's like, "We had a real hammer, I had a prop hammer." He's like, "Just hit me with that. Hit me with it. Just I don't honestly do what you Mate, want me." Just been a pair of it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but he just honestly he throws himself back on the deck and he done it once he done a couple of tests but he actually went up in the air first and landed on his back and I was just like amazing but for most people even getting tapped with a foam hammer what about like uh, what do you call that like insurance liability and that would you have been done for it well a guy actually I did like an open call and this guy came a really nice guy and he was a great like extra and he came at the end of it he's like um, he's a like, perfect like, does every extra that had like 500 films he's done or something like that he's like um, do you want me to sign the release forms I was like mate we're like no, that production man like <laughs> just need just need kind of Ask, like, ask forgiveness, no permission, sort of thing. Aye, nah, that's true. So it's, it's true. a gentleman's agreement, then. Aye. It's just like, aye, like I'm trying, I'll do my best not to hurt you and take advantage. <laughs> I think it is easier as well. Like it, it it's easier when there's n no money involved, uh -huh. and it when that because it's like we're all in it together. Like if I hit you, like just know that I'm getting paid, or mm. you're a stunt double, and I've just whacked you with something. Aye. Like everybody's sort of in it together, trying to make it as real as possible. And as soon as, as soon as you introduce that, then you lose like some things as well. Because I, I was like, pricey, the guy, like, the filmmaker for Springborn, he was saying that he was shooting one, and it was like a, a funded short and it was like a scene it's called boys night and it was like a guy taking his drunk dad back home to springburn um and he's like uh, he took like a screwdriver with him pricey and it wasn't in the script of that it's just like this wasn't he working on that so he said try this and um he went like that during the scene he went like come on come ahead then or something like that with the screwdriver and like the production team's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa put that away now like if the police come and that son could happen and that so they're like they're thinking about their own job so you introduce like like you said red tape and all the rest of it so it's like it hinders you in a lot of ways but it can also add a level of polish which is like Great as well. Uh, yeah, so you need to kind of find a balance with that, maybe. Mm -hmm. right, 100%. Way. But obviously, I mean, that was a success, mate. I'm, I'm, I think we're safe to say it was it was definitely a success. Oh, but you. obviously, that took you fucking five five years, right? I mean, I, I kind of don't even want to ask, but like, is there, is there an, is, in your head, do you like, right, on to the next one? Uh, like, you, I like, when that finished, I was, because that's one thing that Christopher Nolan said that, like, the best case scenario, if it happens for you at a festival, somebody says, that was great. What do you want to do next? And if you wait a year to write something, then they've forgotten about because the next crop of films have come out of the festival, and it's Aye. like you done. I done this last year. I don't know if you remember me. And it's like I a younger, hungrier Paul I Morris. Well, it. Exactly. <laughs> it, could be. it could be. So I've been writing something that's um, an our script just now, and just try to get that cobbled together. And um, like fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. I'm just still trying to do like film festivals and stuff like that. So just try and get it to a bigger audience. Um, can I ask you a question? Eh, uh, no. Eh, uh, all right. <laughs> no, um, if you had uh, this is a pure stone question I think somebody asked Paul Just Black I, I know what you're going to ask guys if you had would you ask Shag a dog and eat one <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we were going to ask that no? Aye, we got asked that we last week that everybody. Aye, that's, that's the main question um, so if you had unlimited budget and you could do anything you want what film what kind of film would you do where would it be you know that I'd like to do a sort of like medieval style film, but like Vikings, like the Viking invasion of Scotland or something, but have it like proper, 
like big battle scenes and having like a woman at the front here, like a sort of some queen that's got taken into it and like was born and it should have been born a guy sort of thing, but then takes on the role, the mantle of this sort of like warrior queen and ah, takes it on. Mulan, but real life and then maybe something like that. <laughs> or like, um, but have you heard of Boudicca, like this mad Celtic queen? Like no, she was like no, this kind of real character. Do you know, like Scottish history and stuff? A bits, uh, bits and bobs. I mean, I kind of like just like steal what I, I like and think could be a, a good story, but uh, that's something like that. Really impressed me, like even just like the Vikings being in America and landing there. That's, that's like before Columbus and all. That's is that pure mind. bizarre concept? Think about isn't it. Aye. These guys just would took where they wanted. Imagine trying to do that with no budget. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the Vikings in it. <laughs> Look very bad. Man. Just uh, what, what's your name? With mother. I just mother with a big wheel. <laughs> he's he's got to be a different man. I Mate, that's what I was going to ask. Like, do you think you'll always use your pals? I'd like to. I would. I mean, I think. I would like to use them for whoever wants to be like involved. I'd hundred percent to be involved. Um, but there's also that sort of danger where it's almost like you're staying in your comfort zone, not not for not using them, but if you kind of say like you don't like expand or do different sort of subject matter because mm. you write for specific parts. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I'd love yeah. to have them and everything if they were up for it. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens, really. Aye. Okay. Nice one, mate. Well, that was fucking absolutely fantastic, I mate. That. Aye, Thank you so much. Brilliant, brilliant mate. Cheers. Honestly, loved that. Um, so, I what, what's next? Just uh, this this next script. Yeah, it's called Anyone Can Get It, and it's um sort of it's like set ideally would be set in Fair Hill, and um the idea I've got for it is like this um like two warring families, right? And it's like um a kid's born between them, and it's the opening scene is like this this uncle who's trying to get out the son's dad. What's happened to his sister, who's the mum, and like the son the boy's dad comes for like a a family like. Madmen, and they run the area, um, and the idea is like the young boy grows up almost like a sort of Frankenstein. He's got the worst parts of his dad, but he's like an outcast. He's like a monster because he's claimed by his other side of the family, and it's like a kind of a, a scheme epic again. That's my idea for it. So I'm writing that, that in the now. Class, it's so class. It's so class that you because see, just now I was like I kind of don't you want to ask because it was like. To, for, for me, I imagine like you do that move and you're like fuck. I can take a wee break now, but nah. I suppose you're right. Like. If you want to keep ahead and you could pure hear when Paul was talking there, like pure, like that was his pure, pure into it. Do you know Aye. what I mean? Like again, just get the exact same hunger that you did at the start of the the first film. And even you need to do it more so because like your people give you a lot of goodwill for doing it off your own back and that and the rest of it. But I mean, you need to prove yourself even more because then it's like a bit of promise, maybe. And then it's like, but can you do it? So need to retain the league, mate. I, ho- I hope so, man. Like fingers crossed, and it won't be five years. Hopefully, um, mate. Just one more thing, because you never know who's listening to this. Could be a young Joe, jo- a young Joseph sitting in his room listening to this. Didn't he? So, say somebody's out there right now listening to this, and they're like, right, I, I kind of am right into writing things and that. Like, what would your advice be to them right now? Like, what would what would what would you tell them? If it's writing, I would say like treat it like training, and I would say do a set amount of hours a day. That's what I would say. Like treat it like write because like right now like I'm writing really badly but I'm writing scenes after scene and it's it was terrible but you can't work on something if it's like you've not got anything if it's an idea in your head you'll have it till you die there's always a guy down the pub with an idea for a book or an idea for a film he's had since he's a wee boy so you need to write it down and get the terrible version out and just force yourself to do it and treat it like training because you will get better at it and um, I so find a way writing is rewriting kind of cliche I think it is I think yeah. so and like just sitting down to do it and forcing yourself and like inspiration's like a, a lot of shit and it's just like sitting down and, and the habit of doing it I think it's the main thing to try and instill aye no, that's fantastic mate thank you so much for coming thank on you, man Thor- thoroughly enjoyed that one that hope you've enjoyed mate. it troops as always like the video comment send Paul Morris money for his next movie mm-hmm. um, send him that moolah um, the GoFundMe is below <laughs> <laughs> no cheers to, tell us who you want to see next thank you I'm going to start sorry I'm going to start rating the reviews that are on uh, iTunes and that I'm going to start reading them out and going that was a good tune and then you can get a shout out so I leave his reviews I think that was a love very reviews. convoluted way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was it. I, basically, rate us five stars on Spotify, and that's that's it. Right, cheers, trips. Cheers, trips. Right.